Hey, everybody. Tonight we're going to be de debating, uh, is the Book of Mormon scientific? Kyle Adams is here to defend that claim, and we're going to put the floor over to Kyle Adams. So floor is all yours, and thanks for being here. Thank you. So I'm Kyle Adams. I am both a Christian and a flat earther, and I am defending the claim that the Book of Mormon is a scientific book. That is the topic of this debate. And as a Christian hey, and a flat earther, I go up against a whole lot of atheists and uh, globalists, and they all love to put the word science and scientific on this lofty pedestal, and they practically worship the word. <laughs> and I don't know if you're one of those people, uh, but if you are, uh, please forgive me as I knock that definition off its pedestal. Okay, By dictionary definition, the very basic definition of the word science is systematized knowledge in general. Okay, just systematized knowledge in general. It doesn't say that that knowledge has to be perfect, accurate. Uh, it just needs to be simple or systematized. That's it. Just systematized. Okay, and you, you don't even have to follow the 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 scientific method. That's not a requirement here. Uh, I'm not saying that the Book of Mormon doesn't follow the scientific method. Uh, there's some of the most powerful invitations in the Book of Mormon are to experiment upon the word. Uh, but yeah, again, that's kind of focusing on it a little bit of a different thing here because we're just aiming at systematized knowledge in general. And so let's take a look at some mainstream academia references because they use the word science very, very openly. Uh, maybe you've heard of the words... Uh, History and social science. That's something that academia uh, definitely considers a science. You can get a bachelor's degree in that. Bachelor's in science in history and social science. Ever hear of computer science? How about political science? Where is the scientific method in political science? In gerryman gerrymandering, perhaps? I don't know. So they also consider the humanities to be a science. The humanities. Okay. By this dictionary definition, the dictionary itself is a scientific book. It is a bunch of knowledge about the world that has been alphabetized and systematized into that book. So that's knowledge that is systematized in general. So why do globe earthers and atheists use the term so narrowly? Okay. So according to my knowledge, the Book of Mormon is true. Okay. And if we actually open up to 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 3, says, and I know that the record which I make is true, and I make it with my own hand, and I make it according to my knowledge. That's Nephi speaking that. So he's making that according to his knowledge. And if you ever go to like a Latter-day Saint church service, first of the month, you might hear a lot of people stand up and share their testimonies that I know that the Book of Mormon is true. And when they do this, they are stating that the Book of Mormon is true according to their knowledge. So it is knowledge to someone, even though you might not claim to have that knowledge for yourself. It's still knowledge according to someone. So uh, I know the heliocentric model isn't knowledge according to, to me. I, I find a lot of faults in that. But I still consider it scientific, even though it's not part of my paradigm. And so I can hope that you'd want to, or that you'd be willing to give the Book of Mormon the same respect, even though it might not be part of your paradigm or part of your knowledge. It's still knowledge according to other people. So before you go out and try and bash on the Book of Mormon or Joseph Smith or Brigham Young or anything like that, please keep in mind that's all a big red herring. It's all about whether, it's not about whether or not the Book of Mormon is perfect accurate, or even true. The topic of this debate 
is on the word science and scientific and whether or not the Book of Mormon can be described as such. That is the goalpost, and it is a mile wide. Okay. By that definition, uh, or by those definitions, because sci scientific just means anything that is systematized, uh, I could also argue that the Quran is scientific, even though I'm not a Muslim. I can, I could even go so far as to claim that Teletubbies is scientific. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just how wide this this goalpost is, and uh, so I can hope you can see just how easy it is to to make a goal on a mile wide goalpost like that. Uh, now I know you might feel like I've slaughtered the, the the significance of those words, science and science scientific, but it wasn't me who slaughtered it. Okay, that's just the definitions how the dictionary describes it. That wasn't me who did it. Thank you and good luck. All right. Thank you, Kyle, for your opening there. I just want to remind everybody that uh, here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral debate platform. We're hosting debates on science, religion, politics, and the like. Uh, and, and we'd love uh, you know, to hear from you fellas. So we are going to do a Q&A at the end of all of this. Uh, just make sure that you guys keep hitting that like button so we can get this out to as many people as possible. Uh, and we're, with that, we're going to hand it over to Mark. Uh, thanks so much for being here, and the floor is all yours. Thank you so much. And I'll just get this up uh, first and foremost. There we go. I'll share that. Just let me know when it's coming through, if you can be so kind, Ryan. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for uh, Carl to be here and, and do this. Thanks um, to Ryan for hosting and uh, the audience. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Now, the, so um, the question is whether any holy book can be a uh, scientific text. So let's see, what's the definition of scientific? There's a few definitions and they relate directly to the process or methods of science. These methods can vary, but they have a common theme. They're all related to science and how science is practiced. It is simply not the case that we say if scientists write something down, then it automatically is science. The methods that anyone uses must follow the process of science. So the better question is, what is science? Science is a systematic series of processes used to ensure the information gathered is rigorous and reliable. Here are a couple of def definitions, but the process is very well outlined. Even if by chance a book gets some things right, it doesn't does not make the book nor the way the information was gathered scientific. In fact, it could get everything right and everything correct, but if the scientific method was not followed, then it is simply not a scientific book. Um, these are examples of scientific books. Um, note that we can go back and go into any of these books and scientifically test to see if they are right. We can verify them. They'll have experiments described in them to do exactly that. Um, also note that fundamentals of physics here is the fourth edition and may have multiple editions. Corrections and additions are common in scientific books because we'll update them as needed when we find anything incorrect or about anything to add. That is the very nature of science, that it changes when we get new information. And these book reflects that. These books are not scientific. There's no possible way we can go to the Book of Mormon and scientifically test to see if any of the information in them is correct. This is a lack of falsifiability, and it's directly antithetical to the idea of science and its principles. There are things in the Book of Mormon that are 100% uncategorically incorrect, and I'll go into that later, about the world around us. The people that believe in the Book of Mormon will not or cannot update the unscientific errors in the book, although I do notice they've corrected spelling and grammatical errors. Um, they can't change the story to any degree, and that is why it is dogma and not a scientific book. Um, the Book of Mormon also relies on the authority of Joseph Smith, and was he a scientist? Um, it, in my mind, he does lack credibility, and I will explain why. He was not a scientist. He was a treasure hunter. He used something called seer stones to try and find buried treasure to investors. He never found any treasure, but he was arrested for glass looking, which was a sort of fraud of tricking people into thinking he had magic powers. He claimed a vision that led him to plates that led him to write the Book of Mormon or translate it from, from the uh, origin that he gave it. Um, but he would not show the plates to anyone else, or he did show them to some, but they were his followers and others could feel the plates, but they weren't allowed to look at them. Um, when he was finished with this sort of highly unscientific translation, he claimed that anyone, the, the angel given the vision, could take the plate so he couldn't show anybody. So we cannot replicate what process he used. And that process was getting the stones, putting his head in a hat and sort of 
getting the, the translation through these stones. Um, he tried to set up a religion, was wanted in three states, uh, had riotous escapades all across the Midwest. He had 30 to 40 wives that lied to the public about them and to his main wife, Emma, Emma Hale. At one point, Smith, in order to avoid criticism, violated the First Amendment by destroying a printing press after a single issue with the Nauvoo Expositor, Expositor attacked the beliefs and accused him of polygamy, which turned out to be true. Um, all Smith's like it speaks to a dishonest man who was ruthless and attacked anybody that threatened his doctrine. Um, so I want to go on to some of the things that are problematic in the book, incredibly problematic. Um, this is the um, said the language he says he translated it from. It is Reformed Egyptian, which is not a real language. Um, John A. Wilson, the professor of Egyptology at the University of Chicago, wrote, from time to time, there are allegations that Pick's writing been found in America. In no case has a professional Egyptologist been able to recognise these characters as Egyptian hieroglyphs. From our standpoint, there is no such thing as Reformed Egyptian. Um, at one point, Joseph Smith bought papyri from mummies that he translates from Reformed Egyptian to the Book of Abraham and the Book of Jacob. Since then, actual Egyptologists have deciphered these scripts, and they're simply funeral rites. They're just simple funeral rites for e Egyptian mummies. They are not what Smith translated them as. Um, the crossing of the seas. Um, the claim is that people living just after the Tower of Babel made the ocean trip from near the Red Sea all the way to the Pacific Ocean on a small, let's face it, submarine. Um, it was an underwater ship that was unpowered, had holes in the top and bottom. Um, no extra Mormon sources exist for these people, no evidence they made this trip, and it's highly unlikely that these people in the Middle East could make a trip the most experienced sailors would have trouble making. The book also says that, that they travelled for 344 days underwater in this kind of weird submarine that was unpowered. Um, DNA Shoe, the Book of Mormon claims that Lam uh, Lamanites were the ancestors of Native Americans. Uh, this would have found DNA evidence, but there's no connection has ever been made. Even Mormon geneticists admit there is no connection. Um, the researchers, uh, Mormon researchers, Thomas W. Murphy and uh, Simon Southerton state the substantial collection of Native American genetic markers are not consistent with any detectable presence of ancestors from the Middle East. Uh, that uh, contradicts the account. Um, so the Book of Mormon describes a flourishing similar civilization, 1.5 million at, at its peak. Uh, Zerahimla was the, apparently the largest city, and at its peak it had 100,000 people in that city. There is literally zero archaeological evidence for it. Um, in 1955, Stuart Ferguson, uh, sorry, Thomas Stuart Ferguson, um, received five years of funding. He claimed he would find these cities in 10 years. He did not find these cities. Um, and then he basically uh, wrote a letter which stated, the real implication of the paper is that you can't set the Book of Mormon geography down anywhere because it's fictional and will never meet the requirements of dirt archaeology. I should say what is in the ground will never conform to what is in the book, and that is from a Mormon themselves. Um, so the, there's a major flaw. Um, things that are written about in the Book of Mormon did not exist. There were no elephants in North America. There were no goats. There were no sheep. There were no horses. They died out about 12,000 years earlier. Um, there's no submarines at that time, uh, sad to say. Um, we found countless depictions of life in Mesoamerica, art, fresco, pottery. None has ever depicted a chariot. Um, and none, no evidence for this civilization or any of these things has ever been found. To sum up, it fails to be multiple fronts to be scientific. It doesn't follow the scientific method. A scientific method cannot be applied to it today. No addition updates any correct information or any presumed knowledge that is shown to be verifiably incorrect. Any science book should able to be validated by anyone working within the field correctly using the scientific method. There is no way this can be done for the Book of Mormon, and hence it is not and will never be a scientific book. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that there, Mark. And we'll just end the screen share there. All right. And we'll get everybody back up with their tags. All right. Well, thank you to Mark and Kyle for being here and doing your intro uh, statements. I just want to remind everybody that both of our guests are linked in the podcast or linked in the description, and they will be linked in the podcast as well. Uh, I got to get on my A game here. Get, uh, I, I was supposed to do my red leather, yellow leather before this. You see, I didn't... Uh, I didn't do my warm-ups. Yeah, I, I, I failed. All right, so we're going to kick it into open discussion, everybody. So we're discussing, is the Book of Mormon scientific? And uh, we'll kick it over to you, Kyle, to uh, to start our open discussion. 
All right, let's talk about the humanities and political science oh. and the way mm -hmm. academia uses those terms. Would you claim any of those are scientific? Of course, yeah. Um, so so we've they're got to make scientific. The well, yeah, we've got to make the distinction between soft sciences and hard sciences. So I think you might be thinking that, oh, it's only hard science that we categorize as science, and that's not true. The methodology for the social sciences are slightly different, but they use things like statistical data analysis and things like that to make testable predictions about the way that population growth happens, the way that uh, people demonstrate various things in society. They do make these testable predictions and do experiments to find out if, say, a change in policy for political science, for instance, will actually result in the outcome that they're looking for. Um, so there's multiple scientific methods but all of them are sort of falsifiable and verifiable that you're making testable predictions that you're validating. Um, and then there's the hard sciences, like, for instance, you know, mathematics and physics and things like that, where you're using very, very strict, rigorous scientific methodology. But what we're looking at is the, the way that we get the information. So what I want to talk to you about is the methods that, that has been used to get the information here, whether those methods are scientific and hence is a science book, because it seems like you're sort of saying it doesn't matter how they got the information and doesn't matter if it's right. It's still scientific. Do you agree with the, there's, I've got a, uh, how is it? Peer reviewed journal article that says that science mm -hmm. never proves anything. Sure. Okay, so you agree with that claim? There's yeah, yeah. So yeah. Th this is this is a problem with the way that you're using proof. So proofs um, always are a unequivocal, hundred percent certainty kind of thing. That's what proof is. So in something like mathematics, you will get proofs for an equation. They will basically demonstrate without any kind of. 100% certainty that that mathematical equation does or does not work or does work rather because it's a proof and you use it to prove that the, the mathematical equation works. What science does is it models at a very, very high rate of confidence and very reliable way, but it never claims to have absolute certainty. That's so never what we're claiming. That's not faith. Like your, your black and white thinking sort of that if it's not 100% certain, it's faith is not not correct. It's called okay. rationality and reasoning, not, not faith. All right. So it's a belief in something that you don't know is true. That is how it is. Def that is how faith is defined, is not knowing for certain if it's true or not. And so yeah, we know it's, that it's, it's a belief true. in something that lacks proof. And that is yeah, so, by dictionary so, definition. So just it is because faith. it is faith. Well, no, it's not because just because you don't know something with absolute certainty is true, it doesn't mean you don't know it. You're that's the thing. Like now, it, it's again that's contrary to the way the word is defined in the dictionary. You're making up your own definition, moving the goalposts, and saying no, this is actually how it is. So what's what's your definition of knowledge? My definition of knowledge. Uh, my right. definition of knowledge is. Just things that your level of understanding, there's different kinds of, of uh, we've got a lot. I've, I just go by the dictionary so I can just open up the dictionary for you on knowledge. Well, I, I, I think that the dictionary is good, a good sort of benchmark to use, but the dictionary is not prescriptive. It doesn't tell you what words are supposed to mean. What it does uh, that's, a, that's, to, what, that's exactly what the dictionary is supposed to. No, do. no. It, it tells describes... you what the word is supposed to mean. No, no, no. It describes what word, how words are used, right? So it describes usages of words. So when we use it, words in society, it describes those units. It, it's descriptive, not prescriptive. It, it, it provides definitions to words. Sure. It tells you what yes. the words mean. And so it, it the doesn't... Word, it, the, the word it, knowledge is an acquaintance prescribe. with facts, truths, or principles from study, investigation, mm. uh, general erudition okay it's a familiarity uh, with a with a, a subject okay it's, yes does that say a, absolute certainty anywhere in it it, it doesn't it doesn't and it so, does not yeah so what yeah. i would define so knowledge it's according as is to justified, my knowledge yeah just one second i'll just define it as justified true belief right so it's a belief that is justified and is also true 
a belief that is justified and it's also true is de a definition yeah. to what word knowledge knowledge i'm not seeing that diction any definition up here uh do you want, maybe you should check the stanford encyclopedia of philosophy um that's oh, a, so philosophical you're, it's a different definition. it's a completely different so yeah i'm sure someone out there can define things that way i'm just well, talking about it's the, when the general the, the general dictionary well, it's, it's when you believe something and you have a justification like for instance i say hey i i know that my my wife's in the house right like i say i know that now it's justified because i saw her out there just a while ago but is it absolute knowledge no because she could have you know stepped out the back or or done something else but it is a justified belief and as long as it's true as long as she's in the house then i have knowledge of that um, you seem to be getting this black and white idea that either you're to have knowledge, you have to be uh, sort of a hundred percent confident in everything you say, and that's just not the case. Oh, whoa, what did I say that presents that? Well, you said that that um, science is just faith because we have a lot of justification under science for saying, "Hey, we know these things; we know them to be true." But I want to get back to the methodology that you're using. So methodology is the um, analysis about methods that you're using to justify what you believe to be true or, or your knowledge. That's right? moving the, that's a red herring entirely. Why? I, I, I it has nothing to earlier. do with the definition. This is a, the, this entire debate is on the definition of science and scientific well, it's not and on whether or not the Book of Mormon fits that definition. I'm not having a definitional debate. That's kind of weird oh, and odd. Well, um, okay, well, then you, you are know, here for so, the wrong debate. <laughs> well, the, the, um, I think it's whether the book itself is scientific. Yes. So that, there's a lot of... Is, which is all about the definition of the word scientific, which means right. anything that is systematized. No, and no, The Book no, of Mormon that is, is not the definition chronologically of systematized. That is that the is definition not of the scientific. Definition. No, it's not. It's no, right out no, of the dictionary. Dictionary.com, scientific. I can give you a screenshot if you want. It is right here. Sure. Go for it. Give me a screenshot. Okay. Share screen. Yeah, we can certainly do a screen share here. just at the bottom of the zoom chat there okay there you go scientific yes. systematic so, methodical yes so um what does it say is the um usage of that how many people buy food in an organized scientific way right that is a metaphor it's using a metaphor now we can go back and look at the the main definition right? The main definition, which is based on or characterized by the methods and principles of science. That's the and main science definition. Science is defined right here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, knowledge. Yeah. Systematized knowledge in general, branch of knowledge studying uh, with body of facts, truth systematically arranged yes. and organized in the uh, operation of general laws. Okay? Yes. So that is just knowledge that has been systematized okay yes and if you want to look so, up but, but the it's word system dealing with and systematized it goes right here this is definition. but it's dealing with a body of facts right a body of facts which you there don't is claim no to know any body facts. of facts okay. there's no 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 that's not true that is not true at all you that just said you don't believe that science proves anything. No. So that's not a fact. So, okay, okay so and, let me talk. Let right, me talk. On. Let me hold talk. On. I'm not done. No, no, I'm no, 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 no. Let me talk okay, because listen. you've made a very, very okay. big claim I will here. listen to you in just a moment. All right. So all right, let's give it 15 seconds then if you can. All right. So Dr. McLaugh or McLaughlin, McLaughlin, however you want to pronounce that, and her in her peer-reviewed journal article that says science never proves anything, she says, uh, a hypothesis is never proven correct, nor is a theory ever proven to be true. Words like prove, correct, and true should be removed from our vocabulary completely and immediately. Okay. So that's gets rid of all that in science. Okay. And so if you don't believe science proves anything, who are you to tell me that the Book of Mormon is not true? Okay, so look at the top where it says we can correct the misconceptions that cannot, science has done deal and that a theory is a hunch. It's not a hunch, right? This is the thing. If you actually read, read the entire thing, he's trying to say that um, science is there to make models 
models that describe reality. That's what it's there to do. Um, but you're just cherry picking and quote mining to sort of make it. And I'd like to share my screen. I can screen read the entire so article. Let my finish it. there. Okay. I, I would like to share my screen if you could be so kind and show where you've sort of skipped over a dictionary because it didn't conform with what you want it to do. So if you could stop sharing your screen and I'll share mine. Yeah, let's kick it over to you, Mark, and remind everybody that we Please. are going to be doing a Q and A so, at the end of this conversation. So do, get your do questions take, in there. So do take note that Kyle took it, his definition from dictionary.com, right? That's where he did. But he didn't take his second de definition from the same place. And the reason why is because the definition is the systematic study of the structure and behavior of physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and testing of theories against the evidence obtained. He went to some other place to get his other definition Google. because this one sinks him. That's why he didn't use the same source for both definitions, which is kind of a little bit dishonest, um, sort of keeping That's in line dishonest with dishonest by what definition but of dishonest? This is... This is sort of science is always written down as the rigorous systematic endeavor it builds and organizes knowledge through the form of testable explanations, predictions. If you're just going to your favorite dictionary source to get a scientific definition instead of science websites and science communicators, then you're already starting out dishonest because you're simply having That's a definition. Not dishonest by any definition. And trying it's to just change reading the, the definition. definition trying to change the definition of science to what's in the dictionary, but not the dictionary that you used for one thing, another changing dictionary the definition. definition to what's in the dictionary. That's yeah, not changing so the I definition. I know that you didn't, you didn't acknowledge that it had multiple definitions and you didn't use the first one in your definition Oh, I definitely do acknowledge that you? it has multiple definitions. Um, but I, I would like to, multiple definitions. I would right, let's, like let's to see, would you seconds, acknowledge, would you acknowledge that experimentation is important in science? experimentation is important in science mm -hmm. yeah experimentation is great in science it's okay how we what, learn more what experiments can you do scientific experiments can you do to validate that the book of mormon is correct oh you still there kyle hello kyle I think Kyle, uh, Kyle froze up. Is he up still on thinking or has he actually gone? No, I think, uh, I think things froze up on his end. We're still rolling. We'll give him a second here, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, if, uh, if you want to try rejoining us, we might need to get you to exit out and come back in. Do -do -do. There he goes. All right, everybody. Well, while we're waiting for uh, Kyle to get back, uh, it seems like a lot of you have a lot of questions and uh, and things you want to push this conversation towards. Uh, definitely get that into the Q and A for the live chat. Uh, for our sorry for our Q and A at the end uh, by posting your uh, questions in the live chat there. Uh, me and Mark are just going to hang out for a second here uh, while we wait yeah. for Kyle to come back. Um, I'm half I'm half tempted. I don't know what the latency speed is on. Our upload right now. I have all of the tracks for the new song. Okay, you you just you just made me go crazy because latency is the delay between signal and and I think you're talking about bandwidth, which is the actual amount you can upload or download in any one time. So you just you just triggered me. I'm sorry, that's my field, and I'm I'm triggered. I, I'd, I'd rather hang out with you than anybody else. Um, I, <laughs> I think that. Um... Well, let me fix up our screen here so we don't look so messed up right now. Yeah. There we go. No worries at all. There um, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this opportunity to give myself a plug. I'm Mark Reed. I'm a counter apologist from Australia, um, which is uh, yeah, is, is is all good and fun. Um, and if you do like to see um sort of logic, so sorry about that. And science, really sorry about that. Give the big uh, flying elbow to mysticism, superstition, and and sort of religion. Swing by my channel. It, it's always a fun time. It's a great community. We accept everybody. And um, yeah, come come on by. Welcome back, Kyle, as well. And uh, thank you. Sorry, my computer that. just crashed on me and I had a restart. Oh, so. it happens, mate. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. That yeah. was that was an amazingly fast restart. So, you know. It does. I've got a good computer. Yeah, which, was, <laughs> that was really good. I wish I could say it was better because it has this crashing issue every once in a while. It, uh, yeah. Well, the what restart it, um, time was excellent. Does it crash the desktop? Does it... Does it um, 
anyway, I won't try and diagnose your computer issues. Yeah. The... Sorry. Right. Uh, I think, Mark, you were just asking Kyle a question yeah. about. I was asking what yeah. experiments could you perform that would demonstrate, like scientific experiments that would demonstrate that the Book of Mormon is in fact true? Alma chapter 32 is probably the biggest, uh, I think one of the more powerful invitations uh, that the Book of Mormon has that it really encourages people to experiment upon the word. And it goes ahead and, and it gives an analogy of planting a seed. Okay, You use the same kind of experiment for the Book of Mormon in finding out if the Book of Mormon is true as you would in finding out if a seed is true is a good seed. And if the seed grows and develops, you can tell and know that that is a good seed. And so it's the same kind of process that you'd use in determining the, the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Okay. So are you talking about a literal seed or a metaphorical seed? Well, it's an analogy. So you're taking like a you're literal seed a metaphorical and an analogy. Seed. It's doing that and saying, okay, we're going to follow the same process for for this as we are going to with this okay so the, you're talking about a metaphorical seed because it's an analogy right that's a metaphor not a literal seed a literal seed would be an actual literal seed right so you can't do that and see the outcome all you can do is talk to people and say i don't understand how that would be a scientific experiment where you have observation hypothesis um sort of the experiment and then, then basically repeating that to make sure you get the same result. I, I okay, don't. Okay. Well, understand you haven't how really that... read Alma chapter thirty-two yet. I don't think. Well, and so you're just making a then. appeal to incredulity at this point. And again, it's kind of deviating away from the topic of this debate, which is no, just no, it's very on hearing. topic. It's very on topic. It's you're, you're this not, does, I'm not. This getting is getting this away from. No, no, no. You're trying. Okay, to then have you're here for the wrong of, debate. You're trying to do a red herring to have a definitional debate when really we're debating that is the what process is. and methodology that you can use. Look, okay, I'll show you something. Okay. Okay, here's just a random book. Okay, computer book. Okay. Digital okay. design and computer architecture. It's reversed. This, this, is, this is one of the books that I used in, in university, right? Would you claim it's now, scientific? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. So Th there are, there are paths, there are stuff in here, there are uh, circuit diagrams. If I wanted to, and I had enough time, like a ton of time, I could go through and scientifically validate every single one of these circuits. I could set them up. And indeed, there is experiments in there to set up these circuits and validate that, say, the truth tables, the, the outcomes that this book says are actually true. I can implement that. That's what makes it a scientific book. And I'm asking you how you do that for the Book of Mormon that you go through and it says all of these things that are supposed to be true. How do you do that scientific experiment to say, if I do this, then I know that book to be true? That's another topic. I, I'm just going to point out. Okay, That's not another that, topic. A, an English book. An English book. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is considered a science in academia. No, it's not. No, it's not. You can get a degree in science and humanities. It's an arts degree. It's an arts yes, degree. But it's specifically a bachelor's in science. Okay. We can go here, no. right, right here. I've got a link to Dixie.edu, or actually that's, uh, I've got a link to an academic source and what you can get your bachelor's degree in. If you'd like to go take in a English. look at that. You can, yeah. These are social sciences and, uh, Yes, social sciences. Yes, I absolutely agree. They're sciences. Yes, but if you're looking at a, like a, a bachelor of arts in English, that isn't a science degree. I don't know why uh, you're saying that. It is a science degree. <laughs> okay, uh, inter a bachelor of arts is a science arts degree. And sciences department, arts and sciences department. Okay? Yes, and it's you an can art. get your bachelor's yes. degree. I personally, okay, I personally have a. Uh, I can show you my <laughs> degree. I've got a bachelor's in science with an emphasis in art in drawing and painting that is my degree right there i can show it to you okay and so are you telling uh, me that academia from? is wrong in saying that art like in drawing and painting i got it from dixie state university yeah i i i, I don't know whether you're you're studying some sort of science of art like some sort of like examining exactly what makes art art 
But like to, to say that a Bachelor of Arts is a science degree is just a gross misrepresentation of science. So you're telling me that it's now called uh, Utah Tech University is wrong. Uh, I never said that. Well, I'm just telling you what my degree says. And you're telling me that that's wrong. Well, I, I think that it's that not degree, science. Mm, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what they're calling science over there, but you still haven't answered my question. And let's go back to it because you dodged it completely. Well, that's what because it's a red herring and I'm not, I'm not here to have that. No, 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 no. You don't get to just change the topic when you decide it is the to topic. you don't that's want to answer an, a question, with. Kyle. I'm asking you, you said, you said to me straight up that experimentation is important to science. You acknowledge that. Then I asked you what experiments you can do in the Book of Mormon to validate that the things in it are true and you dodge. So let's go back to it and let's say, okay, for instance, they crossed the sea in a submarine with a hole in the top and a hole in the bottom, right? You this know debate, this story. As I told you in the, in no, no, no. This is from is the Book of about Mormon. Accuracy let's let him, from the Book let's of let him Mormon. ask his question there, Kyle. How do you do an experiment to show that that is actually true? Well, how do you do an experiment to show that your history book is science, okay? To show that George Washington had wood teeth or something like that. Uh, you can You can get evidence for that. You can find you can put evidence together for evidence. That? Well, I, yeah, I, mm -hmm. well, there's evidence is so. But this a is really a broad term itself right there too. This is a what aboutism. It's just oh, but this other thing you can't. No, I asked you a question and you dodged again. What experiments can you do to tell you that these things that are claimed as factual in the Book of Mormon are in fact factual? And you will not answer. So okay. stay so on that topic. My answer, okay, the Book of Mormon is yep. all about building a relationship. Okay, It's all about building a relationship with God and getting a direct answer and watching miracles happen in your life. Yeah, that is directly related to God. Okay, Then it's not now, a science book. Then it's a religious your book. English book is not a science book. And you're telling me that all of mainstream academia and the way they define science, they're utterly BS and wrong. I've told right? you how they define science. No, you just kind of dismissed it. Yes, I have. Not, so I've got my whole my whole bachelor's degree in science. You're like, oh, what's uh, that science? Do you want me to read out the definition again, like from dictionary.com? If you're so great on dictionary.com, would you like to hear it again? Oh, you can go go for it, but you gotta think, go on and explain exactly how um the history is the science and the way that yeah, the long list of different ways that academia uses it is science. Sure. And there's multiple scientific methods, but none of them apply to the Book of Mormon. That's the thing. And the it, systematic but it applies study to drawing of, and painting? Okay. So here we go. The systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical or natural world through observation, experimentation, and testes, testing of theories against the evidence obtained. Would you agree with that definition? Yeah, I agree with that definition. That's one way okay. that it's defined. So what it's not the only way it's you... defined. It's just one way it's defined. So what evidence have you gathered that all of these things happened? Evidence is a really, really broad term. Okay. And so a testimony is evidence, right? When someone Barely. says, I saw this thing, it is considered an evidence. It is evidence. And so when you go into a court of law, right? You won't go and gather witnesses and testimonies and say, I saw this thing happen, right? And so the Book of Mormon has many witnesses to it. And well, the they problem all sign with that is, into it. Well, the problem so with that, that is that is evidence. That you ask for evidence, that's evidence. That, yeah, yeah. If I could just you can say talk, there's, the there's, problem, you can say there's problems yeah, I could, with Yeah, if I could just talk, fine. Kyle, Kyle, I let you say what you want to say. Just let me talk. The problem with that is that all kinds of people testify to all kinds of things. People claim to see aliens. People claim that, you know, leprechauns inhabit the earth. I met one guy who believed in gnomes. If you're going to be intellectually consistent, you would have to put your weight behind that evidence as much as your own, unless you're showing bias towards one form of evidence. And I do note that that the person, some of the people that Joseph Smith had as his witnesses actually turned on him and said that he was a fraud later on so they how never, do you explain they never that? disclaimed the book of mormon they they held true to the book of mormon the whole time now they can claim that joseph smith was a fallen prophet later on down the road yes but they never they denied did. that the book of mormon was true 
Martin right. Harris and is one of those people who on his deathbed said, you know, I, I fell away from Joseph Smith. We had a falling out, but the Book of Mormon is still true. And the age gap between these these men and their youngest wives was incredibly massive. Which has they nothing had to do with our topic. They had incentive to make it up. But you, you opened this door, whether they are credible witnesses, because what makes testimonial evidence credible is having credible witnesses. And you're talking about the main witness being a man who was convicted of defrauding people through glass scene. Um, and and actually was convicted of many crimes in many states, um, including treason, um, a threatening to kill a judge, um, a whole laundry list of, yeah. of things. So with that if is, you're looking for credibility, relevant. as I said in my presentation, if you're looking for credibility, the people that you're claiming are credible have a real problem because Joseph Smith indeed had multiple wives and lied to the people about it. He lied. So you can take a convicted felon, and because he's a convicted felon, and he says dogs are mammals, does that make it wrong? No, it doesn't. Okay, convicted yes, felons says can say things that are true. God. If he said he saw God, I'd need more evidence than just his yeah, word. So it's not Which just his thing. word for it. If, if you tell me, if you tell me, like, oh, well, uh, you know, I, I, I went for a trip down to the store. I would say, okay, well, people go to the store. That's that's a very mundane claim. That's fine. You know, I'd probably believe you just upon your testimony. But if you're telling me you went to Pluto, then I would need more than just testimonial evidence. I would need you to back that up in some way. And the I problem agree. here is you have a group of people with a good reason to motivate them to not tell the truth, saying a story that is not even credible. I brought up all the problems with the evidence, like how did they have submarines? How did they have horses when there were no horses in North America? How did they make a trip across the Pacific in a submarine? Um, and you, you, you don't seem to think that that requires more investigation than just, well, they said it's true. That is not scientific. That is the antithesis of science. I, you just asked for an for evidence, and I said, okay, well, there, this qualifies as evidence by the dictionary. And it's so not scientific just, evidence, is it? Oh, well, you are just moving the goalpost. <laughs> well, the, w when we're talking about whether it's a scientific book, if I say, does it have evidence, I would expect it to have scientific evidence, not just people said they did a thing like there's no science book out there where people say hey i think that bacteria will do this and don't test it and they just like let bacteria go and then say hey bacteria did it just take my word for it that is not how science works and it's and bewildering you have that you proof think of this that... claim for someone who does not believe in proof uh do i ha have evidence for this claim oh so okay but not proof so you who are you to be telling me any of this stuff? Yeah, okay. so now you're just you, going you can't back tell to the me definitions I'm wrong. of proof. Yeah, you can't tell you're, me you're I'm wrong. You're going back to the definitions if of you proof. Don't even I can tell you you're unscientific, you're though. Wrong. Okay. I can tell you you're being unscientific because you're willing to take the word of people saying it's true over the process of experimentation, observation, um, systematic testing in order to find out that it's true. And that's why the Book of Norman will never be a science book or a scientific book, it's because it doesn't have that process. And you can pleading. go to other... Def it's not special pleading. It's well, special how is pleading. it special pleading? How is it special pleading? Oh, well, that definition doesn't qualify, or, or neither does this definition qualify. It has to be my special definition of qualify, or to, in order to qualify that. I'm not really seeing academia use that. You're kind of off, kind of on the Academia does use that. Academia does exactly use the definitions I've been using. They, what they don't use is your definitions, except what they don't use is your definitions, Kyle. That's what they, they do don't use. use. My definitions. They That's don't why just they use say, so broadly. hey, it's no, 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 Kyle. If you think academia believes that the Teletubbies is scientific, I don't know what to tell you. I'd love for you to go to your university or college and start telling professors that the Teletubbies is scientific. I, it's I, systematically I, organized. It's got to. a beginning. It's got a middle. It's got an end. It tells a story and it uses some use. It has the some Teletubbies uses. is not scientific, mate. I'm really sorry to break it to you, but th there is no 
observation testing. Like when we're talking about science, we're talking about the scientific method. Do you, oh, do you don't know you think what it has is? to do with audience retention, right? Don't you think they ever do any kind of studies on audience retention and what's going to play better to sure. their their target audience? And so they definitely do study like the things the field that they is called show in, in that. And th when they the field show is the called on the screen, they're trial. trying to teach children things. And so they are very much trying to be educational. It's an educational kids show. Right? Yeah, so the, the field is called communications, Kyle, not Teletubbies, okay? And There's nothing scientific about the Teletubbies. Yes, it is, because it does yeah. do observation experimentation. But you're trying to say that anything at all that uses anything systematic is science is That's wrong. Dictionary it's hundred percent wrong. No, it's not. I read out you the, can dictionary tell me that the definition and you agree to it. Wrong. The systematic Audience study right of the there. structure and no, behavior of the physical over. and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. That does not apply to the Teletubbies because they're not doing experimentation. They're not doing testes of theories against evidence obtained. You agreed to that In definition seconds, and we'll it doesn't it match what you're saying. Okay, well, my my proof is in the pudding. Okay, it's right there in the dictionary. Anyone can look it up. Yeah, so this is this is sort of the dishonesty of sort of going, well, I've gone to this particular definition in this dictionary that I've sort of cherry picked out. Um, that sort of because his first definition was from dictionary.com, but he doesn't want his second one to be for that because he can't twist it to make it's it fit what, what exactly Google. what he wants. It's the same so, thing. I don't um, want to have favoritism here's the, with dictionary. Yeah, if I could finish, Kyle, like if you could let me finish, or are you just going to be rude? Is that what you're going to do? Okay. Um, so if you go to um, a dictionary, what it's doing is it's telling you how the words are used in society. So very broad definitions. It's not telling you this is how it has to be used. And and note the dishonesty of missing the first definition and going I'm straight dishonest. to the second. He is, I'm excuse sorry. me, he is cherry picking what definitions he wants to try and twist them to how he wants them to be used. And I want the evidence for these things happening because you agreed to my definition that says you required evidence. So what evidence, scientific evidence do you have for the submarines, the horses, the the people building a massive civilization that we can't find anymore what evidence please okay so yeah submarines i don't think they like were in joseph smith's day okay like submarines was that even like invented yet so how would joseph smith know what a submarine did he just invent the submarine like the moment he wrote about that i, I don't think so uh, but yeah evidence comes from god Okay, we watch miracles happen in our lives. Okay, we say prayers, we get answers to our prayers. Many people have seen angels themselves. I've got many ancestors who've seen many miracles throughout their life and documented it. Okay, and so it's because we follow the word, we study the word, and we apply the teachings into our lives. We pray, we get answers to our prayers, and then God speaks to us and says, hey, guys, this book is for real. Okay, doesn't matter if they're given technology that was given to them you know, in advance before everyone else did. Okay. That's all irrelevant. Okay. Yeah. So, so Kyle, you're sorry, go ahead. So I'm just saying that that's it. Okay. This is yeah. all about a study and building a relationship, okay? putting the words under the, uh, giving it, experimenting upon the word. There we go. Yeah, no, that's not science. So so it doesn't matter what of your ancestors saw what or claimed to see what or what you say you've seen or whatever. That That is not what science is. Oh, like, I don't okay. just so go into... observation. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, can it's... you please let me finish? You are so rude, man. What is wrong with you? Well, let's just continue on. Um, yeah, let's try to uh, mitigate those interruptions. Uh, like, because if... Yeah. if if you go into a lab and sort of say, hey, I saw an angel and my ancestors saw an angel and things, they will be going, well, how can we t test for this? How can we experiment and find out if it's actually true? You think that people saying stuff is scientific. People just claiming stuff is not scientific. And um, the submarines, they called them barges. Um, they were built tight that they would hold water unto like a dish and the bottom thereof was tight like unto a dish and the sides thereof were tight unlike unto a dish and the ends thereof were peaked and the top there was tight unto a dish and the length thereof was the length of a tree and the door thereof when it was shut was tight unlike to a dish and they actually moved underwater because they were anxious oh behold O lord in them there is no light whether we shall steer also and also we shall perish for in them we cannot breathe save it is the air in them therefore we shall perish they're talking about an underwater barge not powered 
with holes in the top and bottom. And see, your your physicist will know that if you put a like airtight thing and a hole in the top and a hole in the bottom, the water will just fill it up. But apparently this didn't happen. So what evidence do you have that they actually sailed across the Pacific, I might add, in these devices? It doesn't say that they only opened it up underwater. It never mentions that they opened it up underwater, except for like in the hole below. They open it up when it when the it surfaces and it doesn't say that they're always underwater okay a lot of that time it describes them being at the surface of the water but they went underwater periodically over waves and the one that powered it was god okay god was the one who powered it he kind of pushed it along through the waves and so that was a huge part of that story that you're kind of not taking into Apple. consideration sorry and so if i want to prove that these things happened I want to develop a relationship with this God that it speaks of and kind of watch him kind of make some movements in my life. In what ways is he powering my life and kind of pushing my life into different directions? And so for me, a huge thing for me was when I joined the military and God woke me up one morning and said, hey, I want you to join the army. I'm like, what? Why? I had no prior inclination to do so at any time in my life. The only time I thought about joining the army was when a paratrooper walked into my school and he's like, okay, you guys should join the army. I'm like, uh, why? What happens if you get stuck in a tree? You know, that was it. That was my only question for my only thought to it. But I woke up with this strong feeling within me saying I needed to join the army. And so, uh, I knew it was from God. So I did it. I joined and I was in there for eight years and there were three deployments, but I never went on a single deployment. It was kind of a miraculous thing. Kind of, I'm not doing anything to, you know, intentionally try to dodge bullets. I just said, okay, well, I'm going to join the army. And uh, they gave me a $10,000 sign on bonus to do so, which I ended up using to serve my mission. And I got it written into my contract. Hey, um, I want to go serve a mission. Can you do that in the middle of that? And so they're like, oh yeah, sure. And so we got it into my contract and they let me go on my mission, take two years off in the middle of all of that. And so my first, uh, the first deployment that happened, because I joined in a time of war, they said, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, you're, you're still in training here. So we're just going to go off and do this deployment without you. And so they went and did that deployment without me. And uh, they're like, yeah, there'll always be another war. And so after that, uh, I get my papers in after they get back and I go out on my mission and they're like, okay, well, you go keep doing that. There's always going to be another war. And so they went on that deployment without me and uh, said, yeah, you just keep doing good stuff. And is so that cause I, time. This is going on forever. Oh, well, I'm just telling you about how I watched God move in my life. And I was just going about doing good things. And three yeah, deployments happened. To do well, you're debate, talking about really. the barges, right? And we're talking about. Yeah. And so there was many different experiences. Yeah, well, have you, have my you time finished military, your time? I'm trying to not to interrupt to you, but this is going on forever. This is literally oh, going on forever. I'm sorry. I, um, you wanted yeah. an so, answer, and so I was just providing an answer. So the whole idea that God powered it, like how do we test that God powered it? We can't. This is the thing. Kyle wants to say, that oh, the is evidence is that, excuse me, Kyle. Come on, dude. Like, what I'm is sorry, wrong Are we having you? a conversation or are we just we gonna... turns monologuing here? Well, I, was well, say, you I, I just, don't know. Uh, just to be fair, you, you did can't get seem some to talk. stop interrupting. Yeah, yeah, just to be fair, you did have a, a, a long stretch there, Kyle. So we'll, well he could have he made an insertion and say, I want to I want to talk about what you're talking about there. Because it seems like we're just having taken That's true. Okay. Before we get derailed, Which is uh, we're going to hand it back to Mark for one up to Open discussion. Okay. Well, if open discussion is the way we're going, then you're fine if I interrupt you whenever I feel the need. Is that right? Go for it. Go for it. That's okay. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Work. Okay. No problem. Um, so he doesn't know that God actually powered these submarines. He just believes that God powered these submarines. There's no way we can scientifically experiment and find out if Except God did in fact power that. these submarines. Well, he just wants to believe that is the case. How does he know God woke him up? His evidence for God powering the submarines, his scientific evidence for God powering the submarines is that he woke up and wanted to join the military and says that it was God that let him do it. That is one of the most unscientific evidences I have ever heard in my entire life. Life, bar none um okay. if i wake up and i think that hey um my my you know sex drive made me want to do this thing it doesn't mean that that can power a submarine the level of illogic and irrationality here how do we actually test to see whether god can power a submarine or not we can't 
We just can't because that is something we cannot replicate. Well, that's, that that's is a lot why of in the history. Book of Mormon is not a it's scientific not book okay. because there is no science he can actually use to demonstrate that it's the case. Like I pointed out with my science book, we could go through that entire book and with a with a circuit boards and probe prove everything in that book to a certain level. Um, okay, um, there's no I'm way. Just we think can of like a cherry book. pie. If my wife picked a cherry pie and wrote it down in her journal that I ate a cherry pie last week, and uh, yeah, is there proof that she ate a cherry pie last week? I'm just kind of going off of what she said. Well. This is the difference between mundane claims and claims that are extraordinary that require more evidence. As I pointed out, if you said you went down to the store or had a cherry pie, I would probably believe you. If you said you had a pie made out of um, aliens, I would probably need more evidence than just your word on it. Or if you said you had a elephant pie, I would probably like... I'm not sure I believe you, Kyle. I would need more evidence to actually believe that that is the case. It's so essential to see miracles happen in our lives. And so... I yeah, my ancestors came to the Americas, just dropped what they were doing, left Scotland and England and many other places, and they just said, I, I read this Book of Mormon and I have a lot, I've had miracles happen to me and said, wow, this Book of Mormon is true. And so they left generations behind them of living in, in their homes, uh, leaving entire lifestyles and communities, and then they ended up coming to the Americas because of these experiences that they witnessed. Okay, these revelations yeah, so that they had. We don't we don't think something so, is true, and it's certainly not scientific, just because they believe it's true and happen to take actions on that belief. That does not say whether the thing is true or not true. It means that they believed it was true. So that doesn't mean that it is in fact true. Well, I'm there glad are you people disagree with who Dr. have blown who themselves. Says you should there never are people the who have in blown science. themselves into towers. Because they believe their religion is true. People have killed themselves because they believe their religion is true. It does not in any way change whether it is true or not that they believe it. It's irrelevant. Um, if, if you are being intellectually consistent, then you would have to say that that religion is true as well. As well as anybody that's done any change of lifestyle, you would have to say that's true. And then you're into the weeds of, well, all of these beliefs are contradictory with one another. Okay, and as Dr. McLaughlin said, truth, it, it's not a scientific word, according to her. But I don't agree with her, but apparently you do. So why are you make, using the word true so much when she banned that word? Because they're talking about making verifiable, falsifiable models based upon Something's experimental process. If it, so what right. we're doing is we're doing models that are based upon a process and those models try to as accurately as possible represent reality the problem here kyle is you just don't understand what science is you've got now no idea now what it is so you're basically no that's not an ad hominem that's you're, just you're the demeaning truth. me to try and to, to try and uplift no, yourself no i'm not you just I don't, don't understand, understand these things, what you science don't understand is. these things you're demeaning me okay? you don't understand what now, science is i'm demeaning. sorry okay you're yeah all right well you've got you've it's not demeaning you. It's demeaning your ideas of science because they're, demeaning they're, not, me. they're not what science is. You don't understand is talking about my intellect and what mm -hmm. I do and don't understand. And that's demeaning me. Okay. Well, you're, you're you're, what you've described is not science. Me, okay. What trying to bully what, me is not going to be. What you have described is not persuaded. science. And no scientist would agree with you that okay. the Teletubbies the are scientific. Right this is, wouldn't. Is, okay. Dictionary right is not so, a scientist. Find a scientist. A dictionary is a scientific you. book, as I as I described. No, it's not. And you're welcome to believe that. All right, let's kick it into the old Q and A, everybody. Uh, thanks, okay. Mark Reed and Kyle, for a lively discussion here. And I'm sure that we're going to get a little bit more into it as we go through Q and A. You know, I like to. Uh, I like to milk these uh, these Q and A's for all they are, and of course, you know, keep firing them in there. I mean, you know, half the Q and A, it seems like there might be a debate on when submarines were first created. I mean, uh, it, you know, it seems like everybody's got a lot of different ideas about that. So <laughs> uh, maybe that'll be a future debate. I don't know. Well, maybe it wasn't created by uh, somebody in the 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 sort of you know two thousand something BC. Claim science proves anything. We'll get to closing statements here in a little bit. No, you, you can believe in your submarines, Carl. Go for it. I mean, it's it's delightful, but not scientific, I'm afraid. Well, you know, Noah's Ark can also kind of be described that way because it was so 
airtight all the way around. So it's getting yeah. Noah's Ark didn't happen either. Uh, you're welcome. There was to, no global. Flow. You're welcome to think that. Okay, for someone who doesn't believe anything can be proven or true, um, you do you want a flood debate this then? Is certain. Do you want a do you want a global flood debate then? Global flood debate later. Uh, well, if you don't believe anything is proven to be true, I don't think you have any grounds to say someone is wrong about. Yeah, anything. see, that is a red herring. That is just sort of no. You, no, this is a direct. Well. This is um, my foundation just for sort of why saying, hey, I would want to have a further debate with you. Well, it's kind of like a okay, fundamental. Well, if you want to go down someone this who route, does not well, believe. If you, that if you want to go down, down this route, route, you should not be saying making any kind of debates yeah. whatsoever so it's just it's just the only your your black and white thinking is sort of the only time we can know anything is when we have absolute proof which is how they use i never the said word that in that, I never in said that, that category so that is the, what you're enemy. projecting but it is not actually what what we believe and Strong science enemy. itself is there to make not uh, models that we can describe the world and therefore have knowledge about it but you're sort of saying unless it's a proof, unless it's an unequivocal fact, like you have in mathematics, then you 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 don't you don't have the license to say anything, which is absurd. Yeah, you're strumming me. I never said what that. What do you have absolute knowledge of, Kyle? What do you have absolute knowledge of? Cats eat food. Really? My cat eats food. Is correct. Let's My go down this rabbit correct. hole. How do you know? I think we're kind right, of getting five minutes, another, guys. We'll have tangent. fun with that yeah okay my cat eats food i i can feed it i can touch it i can smell it yeah i can you have observe absolute it. certainty of that you have absolute absolute, absolute certainty. certainty absolute because certainty. your senses are true and you don't claim it can be proven that cats eat food and that's why what I if your like senses are wrong point in having any further debate with you on the matter what if you're in the you matrix if what if you're in the matrix that. kyle if you kyle, what if you're that. in the matrix okay what if you're in the matrix okay even things on a computer screen okay I, I like to play Ark, okay, on a computer screen. Oh, me too. Okay, these are actual things, okay, this is food on the game, right? And so that game is truth within that sphere, within that that realm. But it's not okay? absolutely true, is it? It is absolutely Oops. true. I am playing no, this game true. is absolutely, yeah. Because okay? it's not absolutely true for that character. They're just zeros and ones. That's the absolute truth. So that is true, but that doesn't that mean that, that it's no, that doesn't mean that. That is not, true. Yes. So it's not things. absolute truth. So you're not absolutely sure of anything it, either. I never said that. Oh, dear. No, you're oh, dear. Me. You're oh, dear. You're not me. absolutely okay. sure of anything either. So you're basically. I never said that. Mode. You're not listening to a thing I said. No, you're, you're sort of trying to say if if you're not absolutely sure, if you you don't have proofs, these this this tangible proof. Proofs only exist in mathematics. There's a very good reason for that. It's because in order to have a proof, it has to be 100% absolute. That is what a proof is in science, in maths. And that's why in science we say we don't deal in proofs. But you want to ignore that. You want to take a definition of the word proof, misapply it, and then say, oh, well, I gotcha. I can now ignore everything you've got to say. Such a dishonest tactic. It is It is really, really bad, Kyle. It's that's, really bad. That's false accusation. Sorry. No, it's yeah, not. It's, it's, absolutely, okay. it's absolutely It does not accurate. fit the definition of dishonesty by any means. Yes, it does. It's because you, like, I've seen you take the second definition, ignore the first. I've seen you go to a different dictionary to get other definitions. You I, are being dishonest. I, use, I, I can use both dictionaries. But let's have a let's have a flood debate, Kyle. Giving you a dictionary let's have a flood definition. debate too. Unless let's the let's dictionary have a flood debate. I think that's dishonest. something we can do. Uh, if, if yeah. that's something you guys I, want well, to do, well, I'd like to hear Kyle agree to it. Can we have a flood debate? You don't believe anything can be proven to be true. That's Therefore, not an answer, you can't Kyle. Say that that's not, not an true. Answer. It's not a debate with that's you. A hey, well, that's say, a dodge. That's a dodge. You're well, dodging well, right now. Well, because I want to push. You're dodging right now. Well, push, dodging uh, right uh, now. Uh, Just uh, say yes I'd or said, no. Uh, it's a simple no. Not unless you can meet no, that okay. bare minimum requirement. You can't back up the flood. That's that fine. You, you, you can't debate the flood. I can't debate it, but you refuse to accept anything as proof. You don't believe there is a proof. So if you can't say that there's that it is I, proven, I, I, I will you have no evidence. means of saying it is not proven. I will accept evidence, and I'll accept like evidence that you can accept upon, that upon it the evidence true, but you that convinces me yeah, that something is debate. true. Why listening. do you keep just talking over the topic? I, I will you're accept that, and well, you're not having a conversation and open. No, discussion. I am having a conversation. I'm saying that I will accept a preponderance of evidence that convinces me that me. that is true, and that is what we're dealing with. The whole idea that you need some kind of 100% absolute proof. If you're defining proof 
as just significant evidence that weighs the facts in your favor, then I will accept proof, right? So that's a colloquial definition of proof. That's one usage for it. Then I will accept it. That's not what science says proof is. Proofs only exist in maths. That's why I'm saying you're misapplying these definitions. All right, we'll okay. let you uh, wrap it up there, uh, Kyle, for that discussion. Uh, I think Mark's uh, expressed his point there. So we'll give you 30 seconds and we'll go right into the Q&A. All right, my proof is in the pudding. It's in right here in the dictionary definitions that I directly cited. And uh, if you disagree with the dictionary, if you claim the dictionary is dishonest, then I'm being dishonest. <laughs> but you actually, that's really the dictionary, the dictionary being dishonest. Oh, let's give it that's a not really time there, me. I'm just... Yeah, the one who's quoting the dictionary. Well, he said I could interrupt anytime I want. So yeah, go for it. You know. I'm sorry, I'm yeah, not really trying to monologue, and so when I start speaking, I have the courtesy to try and allow you to say, "Okay, yeah, so I, I got you, that." You, you don't talk. cite the dictionary; you cite like sources, like papers and things. Nobody cites the dictionary. It's just like just it's not a thing. Well, obviously, I'm obviously that's a demeaning me again because I'm now suddenly I'm nobody. Well, stop using it wrong. Then, then we'll, you know, we'll stop having to correct you. All right. Well, we have lots of questions here and there's more pouring in. Uh, keep them coming, everybody, because uh, as you can see, we've got lots of fire on our heels now as far as our subject is going tonight. Uh, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, Big Bad Mama, $5. Yeah. Kyle, explain how Joseph Smith as a supposed prophet, misinterpreted both the Kinderhook plates and the Egyptian book of the dead papyrus. That is a loaded question. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, he did actually get these scrolls from the mummies that were papyrus and translated them as the book of Abraham. Actually? Did you say Jacob. actually? Um, you did say actually. Yeah, yeah. He, he mistranslated them into the book of Abraham and the book of Jacob somehow. I don't think you can say um, actually. Egyptologists can say looking proven. at the... Um, papyrus went, yeah, they're the book of Tibet funeral rites. Very common in Egypt. But he just made up the book of Abraham and the book of Jacob from these funerary rites and somehow claimed it was divine revelation. It's ludicrous. And you don't claim it's proven, so I don't think you get the one to make that definitive claim. A person who disclaims really? science never proves anything should never, ever make definitive claims. Really? Yeah, so that's not evidence for you. That's just like you oh, I, fall I don't, back I don't on that sort of straw man of my you position. You so is hey, definitely evidence. I mean, because I never science said it wasn't doesn't evidence. have proofs, then you can't actually claim that no, the, your evidence weighs against anything I believe. Because you have you no have right proof. to say actually That ever. is the strawiest man. That is the biggest scarecrow I have ever seen, Kyle. Well scarecrow, done. Scarecrow, huh? I uh -huh. Yeah, misrepresented like you. I just... Yeah, this is your term. Yeah. You said you, science never proves anything. So, yeah, that negates all rights to you. Yeah, that for, doesn't follow. Use the word actually. That doesn't follow. That doesn't follow. Because just because there's no proofs, as I've explained, doesn't mean you can't have overwhelming evidence for something that convinces you of actually the truth of a statement. Actually does not mean overwhelming evidence. That's too separate things so all of the egyptologists were lying when they said it was a normal papyrus with the book of the dead that we find you don't in lots get to of other speak terms. on behalf of all egyptologists do you i you said all the egyptologists that that like review oh now you're now the you're papyrus. moving the you said all the egyptologists now you're now yes you're moving all your the egyptologists post. that all looked the at the papyrus yeah no okay you don't get to speak on on behalf of all Why won't the you address you haven't this? even cited Why a single you Egyptologist. Okay, you haven't I mean, even cited a that. single Egyptologist. So I can't speak on behalf of any Egyptologist that I haven't seen. I can't I can't give account for anything like that. So yeah. All right, everybody. Well, Mark, let's add um, up. Keep those super chats coming in. We're going down the rabbit hole now. Okay, so the Mormon scholar David Bokovoy. Um is he an uh, Egyptologist? Said, Yes, Mormon scholar. And you claim that is proven fact. Um, Terrell Gibbons has suggested the characters are early examples of Egyptian symbols used to translate that Demotic is reformed Egyptian. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> mainstream scholars just went, no, John A. Wilson, professor of Egyptology. From time to time, there are allegations. Like, I cited one of them in my opening. I can't believe this. From time to time, there are allegations that picture writing has been found in America. In no case 
Has a professional Egyptology been able to recognize these characters as Egyptian hieroglyphs? From our standpoint, there is no such language as reformed Egyptian. I rest my case. Uh, as if it's a proven fact. Yeah, right. <laughs> You're just contradicting yourself. Hey, you said I what I needed to cite. Hey, you, you rested I just your case. Cited them. You rested your case. I get. I get you. So. All right. Well, let's move on from there. Uh, Satan himself is in the chat. Uh, asked Ooh. a question. What evidence do you have that Jesus walked on water or even existed? What evidence do I have? Well, I've got evidence. It is it qualifies as a testimony. And so I have many testimonies and that's what the, that's the whole entire new Testament kids. Okay? That's what Testament means. It's a testimony. Oh, yeah. who? Who, who, who saw that happen? Who? The, people, the authors of the book that they talked about it. Who authored the books? Matthew, Matthew Mark, Luke, Mark, John, who Luke James, them? and John. Those are all authors uh, of the book. Yeah. Did it ever say that those people authored the book? It says it right there. The book of this, the book of John. The, yeah, that's kind of what the book of John means. Those are traditional authors. They attribute them to these people. We don't know for sure that they actually wrote them. Talk to biblical. Well, you don't claim sometimes. to know anything, so I don't. Yeah. So that's is that your response for everything? It's going to be because that's what you are. That's that's your philosophy. So you're gonna you gotta own it. No. That's your philosophy. That's, a, that's a that's a scientific thing, and that's why the Book of Mormon is not scientific. Because what you do, which isn't scientific, is claim to know, believe that you know, think you can't be wrong, and that makes you right. And that's not how that works. It doesn't matter I, how I much never you said think that you're, you're right. You you're not right because you think you can't be wrong. So, you know, this is I never why said the, that. the Mormon is okay. never, ever going Represent to me correctly, please. When you start representing me correctly, but I have. That's the thing. <laughs> You're basically saying, because I acknowledge there's no proofs in science, I can't know anything. That is your claim. And it, it's complete non sequitur. One I thing never said that. From the other. I never said that. You're misquoting Then I can entirely. know things, You're right? You're making things up. Then I can know things, right? Then I can know things, right? That I can know things. I And, okay, what... When did I ever say that these this quote? When did I ever give you this quote? You're dismissing what whatever I've presented, you're dismissing because there's no proofs in science. I say I know this because of these reasons, and you say, no, but there's no proofs in science. How do you like if you're acknowledging that I can know things, why are you dismissing them because I say there's no proofs this in science? This is the world according to your knowledge. I'm not dismissing that. I, I that was part of my opening statement. That yeah, this and is, one of us is giving yeah. evidence of how we know it. Like, you're not. I am. I, I did. And so I feel that's kind of part of my opening statement there is just because it's not the Book of, the Book of Mormon isn't part of your paradigm, the world according to your knowledge, that doesn't mean it's not the world according to my knowledge. And so I, I don't agree with the heliocentric model. I find a lot of different faults in it. Uh, but I still consider it scientific, even though it's not part of my knowledge, it's a part of someone else's knowledge. And because it's part of their knowledge, therefore I can call it scientific. That's and not I just what ask makes that you give the same scientific. respect to the Book of Mormon. That's not what makes something scientific. It's whether it has followed the methodology. It's, like it's built, systematized like knowledge Methodological in naturalism is actually the correct term for it. Methodological naturalism. All right. Well, you know what I know? I know that it's time to move on. Uh, thank you so much for your question, Satan. That wasn't actually a super chat. That was one I pulled out of the chat earlier because uh, we didn't have a whole lot of super chats at the time. And uh, I was getting a little concerned there, but it looks like we've got lots to keep us busy here. Uh, so we're going to keep on going. Keep those super chats coming in. Um, like I said earlier, you know, uh, these guys have lots of thoughts regarding the subject here and uh, uh, lots of ways that they discuss it. So moving on. Um, sorry about your name. Um, not in a literal sense. I'm just going to probably butcher it. However you wanted it pronounced. Uh, Udhef Hachu or Heku, Heku. I don't know. $5. Kyle, science is repeatable. Do you have examples of things only Book of Mormon teaches that we can repeat and retest and demonstrate to make sure that it's true? That we can repeat and retest. Yeah, we can. That's the biggest invitation uh, is prayer. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And we can repeatedly pray yeah, and get answers to our prayers. And it We've doesn't mean prayer, we're not. Uh, okay. Well, you claim that, but again, you claim to not have any proof of that. So 
that kind yeah, of so that, 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 that sort of explanation isn't asking me. Actually, the Templeton Foundation did an experiment with intercessory prayer and found that sick people, if they're being prayed for and That's know they're being comment. prayed for, they actually um, get worse. They do worse than, than people that sort of don't know they're being prayed for. But the, the prayer didn't make any difference whatsoever um, to, to the healthiness of the people they prayed for. So we, we know prayer doesn't work. We've experimented with this. Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, Buffalo Bill's niece definitely said otherwise buffalo bill's niece uh had a like a really life-threatening condition and it wasn't until john alexander dowie went and said a prayer over her that she was healed and it was a, a huge thing and that was kind of what this whole thing buffalo bill was a huge famous guy back in like the 1920s and uh very very public and when his niece was miraculously healed that turned eyes to a lot of people. A lot of heads turned. What just happened there? And because it was so such a big deal, uh, that really gave John Alexander Dowie a lot of notoriety and uh, definitely was a yeah. huge help for him in founding the city of Zion, Illinois, which was the flatter city where they taught publicly and openly that the earth is flat in their schools. Yeah, so like, you know, go to a doctor if you're ill, don't rely on prayer for a start, like see a medical professional. Um, the, the whole idea is that prayer works. Prayer doesn't bring back, you know, amputees, arms or legs or anything actually significant. It's always diseases so you, that so either, you, claim. Um, you know, can sort of heal on their own or, or go into remission or something like that. It's never... Which you claim has no proof to Nobody that. has had their, like, eye gouged out and suddenly replaced by prayer. It's, it's nonsense. That's, incredu go, go that's incredulity. You, can't, you cannot account for everyone in the entire world. You're just saying that because there is no one that you are aware of. That's what you really mean. Okay, There is no one that you are aware of that has happened, but that doesn't mean it's never happened. Well, I mean, like I said, we've got evidence that prayer doesn't do anything. The Templeton Foundation did a study. There's other studies that have been done on the effect. Evidence, but not proof. Um, it doesn't actually so, yeah. do anything. Yeah. So, so you know, go to a medical professional if you are sick. Don't rely on prayer. That's all I can say. All righty. Uh, let's move on from there. Well, I mean, that question was for you, Kyle. Did you wrap up all your thoughts on that? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, Coffee Mom, uh, thanks for your membership for six months. It's awesome. Uh, glad to see you in the uh, the old live chat there again. $1.99. Scientifically, Native Americans aren't Jewish. They are welcome to make that claim. Uh, I wonder if this person is one of those people who claims that science never proves anything also, because that would be kind of a big deal, because that would mean there is no proof that they are not Jewish. There we go. Uh, they, they, their DNA has uh, literally no Middle Eastern um, markers in it whatsoever. Like that, that claim has been absolutely shot out of the water. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no markers for for near Middle Eastern DNA in the Native Americans. Just isn't there. And you're welcome to say that. For well, someone who true. doesn't claim that's their proof, or true, that's another well, taboo for you. <laughs> well, if if you're if you're um if you're uh saying that it is true, then you should um I never um, claimed have to it was come true. up with it uh, yeah. because a Mormon researcher such as anthropologist Tom, Thomas W. Murphy and ex Mormon plant geneticist Simon Sullivan, so even Mormons state that there, there's no detectable presence of ancestors from the ancient Middle East in Native American populations, and that poses substantial evidence to contradict the Book of Mormon. You I actually say said evidence, that. but you can't claim it's a proven fact or truth as a, on, on your terms. Oh, no. So DNA evidence, we don't rely on anything that for anything like, I don't know, crime scene analysis and stuff. Is it proof of anything? You can just say it's evidence, but I can also point to a lot of different evidences, but that's just your evidence versus my evidence. But you unless you can actually any prove evidence. anything, unless you can actually prove anything, it's just all null and void. You, that's it. you haven't, you haven't, you haven't presented any evidence all you've done is just state anecdotes i'm sorry you've just dis you've just dismissed any, and... any claim i did so yeah let's go on all right uh so uh yeah ozian had uh, sent me a message there uh you know he's been on here quite a bit and uh thanks for uh being in the live chat there ozian and uh doing what you do uh and helping out with the discord uh he'd asked uh if each of you could define knowledge 
I'll give you guys each... Just uh, my true belief. So I'll just... Uh, yeah, Mark, I think he's already got it there. So I'll kick it over to you, Kyle. 15 seconds. Uh, well, what is An acquaintance with facts, truths, principles from study, investigation, general erudition. All right. Knowledge of many things. Okay, it's an acqu- acquaintance or familiarity gained by sight, experience, or report. I like that one. All right, excellent. Thank you so much. For familiarity. That. It's not a declaration that this is true. It's just uh, familiarity with the thing. All right, excellent. We'll continue on from there. And thank you so much to both of you for answering that question there. All right, Jolly Roger, $11 Canadian. Hey, hey, another Canadian. Uh, Kyle, I still don't understand how you consider the Book of Mormon to be scientific. Can you rephrase or use an example or analogy? Please elaborate. So we'll give the, uh, the Book of Mormon has been systematized. It's in chronological order. It's also been organized by the author of who wrote the book. And so this is the words according to Nephi. This is the words according to Alma. And so it's organized and it's also using the English language and the English language uh, is, yeah, has been organized very systematically and in a way that it can be understood. Okay. And so that's all systematic which is by yeah, definition, which is the definition for the word scientific. Yeah, so yeah. Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones is systemized as well into chapters. It doesn't mean they're scientific Thank you. books. And Thank you. They're, yeah, they're not scientific books either. Like if you're um, saying you Lord can, of the you can, Rings is scientific, you can move the goalpost all you want, but that, that is hilarious. Is that is hilarious. No, no, you're shifting the goalpost from, like if you're actually sitting here and claiming that Lord of the Rings is a scientific book, you realize that, systematized. Don't you? It is systematized. And so, yes. Okay, no, no, no. I, if systematized means scientific and you're Yes, it does. It does. By the dictionary, right, it does. Yes. I Thank said you. if, Kyle, if that is the case, then Lord of the Rings according to you is a scientific not according book. to me not according to me according to the dictionary no, no according to you because nobody to the dictionary. else shares your di- dictionary. dictionary.com nobody else would say that lord of the rings is a scientific book because That's it okay. is fiction and the characters have just as much chance of existing in the book of mormon as they do in lord of the rings we have the You're same evidence that, for both i'm just telling there you is the, no the... evidence for bilbo baggins and there is no evidence for nephi and his family evidence in submarines is not a requirement to be systematized knowledge Evidence is not a requirement. No, you heard it here, folks. Lord of the Rings is a scientific book, according yes, to Kyle. Yes, it is, according to the dictionary. Okay, it's a mile wide. No, a mile wide gold. No, post. nobody thinks that, Kyle. You, you can... are the only one that thinks that. Obviously, that's not the case because it's going by the dictionary, and I'm not the one who wrote the dictionary. Thank you. No, it's not going by the dictionary because the dictionary <laughs> is not saying that. It is it's going not by the saying dictionary. that. It says no, it's I, your it's your warp, warp, warped interpretation of the definition that you have cherry picked that has been <laughs> that, that applied to something right to try to excuse that the Book of Mormon is about as scientific as Lord of the Rings. I never They're both that, not I scientific books. They are scientific by the dictionary. It's a mile wide goalpost. And like I said, I'm knocking that word off its pedestal. And that's exactly what I did. You haven't I knocked, knocked it off anything. the pedestal. I, I you're just out wrong. What the dictionary says, and you can like say you're just 100% wrong. wrong. There's nothing right, let's right go on. about what you're saying. You haven't knocked anything, you're Kyle. You're that, just, that's the only I mean, you're way just you being ignorant of what science actually is. That's wrong. That's all and there's you're doing is showing your ignorance. That's all you're doing. Let's move it's, on there. And, I, uh, you know, as a fellow Lord of the Rings person, uh, I just have to oh, let I everybody, I just have to let everybody in the live chat know, you know, that scene where Aragorn kicks the helmet. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be that. He broke person. his toe in that scene. I know. I know. But everybody, <laughs> everybody insane. has to mention it when they bring up the movie. So I'm just being that person. All I can yeah. say is full of a took. Yes. Yes, exactly. I just, uh, I enjoy how every time Gandalf gets stuck on something, uh, the very next scene, he's there with his pipe. It is methodical. Yeah. It, just, is. yeah. it um, is organized. It's written in the English language. And it's I got need... paragraphs and grammar and it's all, uh, or it's not just random letters. It's all been and kind of processed. scientific. Uh, you're I was welcome just, to I... say that. That's the only thing you can do in, in this debate is just say, no, that is not case. And that's that's all no, you No, no, I've outlined just, what science is. No, that's, no, no, I've outlined that's... what science is, the procedure of science. I've taken the thing from dictionary.com because that's the source that you liked using and showed that your 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 whole thing has no experimentation. There's no way you can replicate what you're claiming to be true. <laughs> that is a requirement of science that you can replicate. 
and according you to your very very narrow goalpost that you've moved so no no there's no moving on. the goalpost you don't get to decide what science is you you've just basically gone well i'm going to cherry pick twist a definition from some dictionary that i didn't even get the source of that you just said the internet is what you said or google is where you got it said you cited a dictionary which is so wrong i can't even you know imagine who would Actually, use that in yeah, a sentence. This one's, and then uh, you sort of said hey because i've now like sort of made anything literally anything science then i can claim my book is scientific well i'm sorry you can't change reality like that it's not scientific this is a religious book it's nonsense it's not scientific in the slightest All right. Well, let's this, continue on. Um, we got lots of super chats, and I'm Oxford sure there'll be. Oxford languages is the one who defined it that way. So you can say Oxford is wrong. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we'll continue on from there because I'm sure that we'll eventually come full circle uh, regardless. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, I was just talking about Gandalf trying to calm himself down during the stressful situations, and we ended up getting uh, right back on the topic. So let's get back to our Q&A, everybody. Um so elusive viper nice to see you again five dollars uh fyi the first submarine was created 200 years before the book of mormon now i got a question uh, kyle just because i'm curious uh, as, as far as uh as far as that history goes when would the book of mormon been published uh the book of mormon was published i think in 1830 i don't remember perfectly okay so okay he's saying um, about, i just want to uh, I just want to add that in, in Kyle's definitions, he missed definition one, knowledge about structure and behavior of natural physical world based upon facts you can prove, by example, by experiments. He skipped number two, the study of science. He skipped definition three, a particular branch of science, and went to four, um, a system for organizing knowledge about a particular subject, especially one concerned with aspects of human behavior or society. So, yeah, this this sort of quote mining of the dictionaries to get the one that he wants and then twisting it exactly what he's doing it's can it be described as scientific and my doesn't, claim was that it can and doesn't mean the context yeah, it's got a mile matters. wide goalpost okay it can be defined yeah. that way no 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 your 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 dishonesty has just been unveiled it's not you're going dishonest past every means... single definition down to the very last one it's kyle not dishonesty your your claim is, is just uh, demeaning you're just trying to demean me even though there's no how can I to be demeaning you? To your claim. I've just said that that is dishonest to go and like. And you have no proof of that, that claim to go off of. So you have just you're all. Oh, I've got a lot of evidence for that that's claim. I just gave it to you. And you have discredited all of your definitive statements. So, no, no, no. I, I have a lot of evidence for that claim. I just gave it. Yeah, so, it's just not you know, proof, right? Good so let's get, let's go on. All right. So next the reason, question. Reason I ask is, uh, yeah, that put it around like what. 1600s because the next question uh, or the next answer was discovering ancient history with pat lowinger two dollars thank you so much for your super chat said the submarine was conceived by w born in 1578 i did not know that and now before you guys mm -hmm. get to that right after that ozion talks uh says for two dollars the first submarine was used in 1863 naval history um so 63. 1830 the I, is predates 1863. Well, yeah, the reason but that I was tell asking... me more about how it was powered by God. Like, did he have a paddle? Did he did he did he have an engine? Is it a God engine? Did he did he shoot light rays down and power it that he way? He could have just pushed it the whole way. I don't know. It oh, very describe. scientific. Yes, yes, very scientific. Yes. Well, uh, the yes, reason indeed. I ask is because uh, we got all different answers here on like the submarine was right. See, no, so maybe I that's was aware the idea. The the concept had been come up with before um, Joseph Smith looked into his hat and wrote it or, uh, you know, whatever he was doing to, you know, come up with this magic book. Um, it, 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 it wasn't really something that was implemented heavily at all. Um, but the way that they described it in there was pretty bad. Um, it wouldn't have worked. They need miracles to make it work, which, you know, yeah, I suppose I if miracles are scientific, then, you know, they I, are. I suppose we should just all <laughs> miracles are scientific. Yes, they are. So, oh, really? Uh, let's move on. Uh, what what's an experiment you can do on a miracle to replicate it? To replicate a miracle, I don't, uh -huh. I don't think it has to necessarily be replicatable in order to be scientific. We've already discussed this. Let's move on. All right, let's continue on. Uh, we got lots of questions, and uh, <laughs> you know, people keep them coming in. 
Um, you know, we're talking about is the Book of Mormon scientific? Uh, we've been talking oh, yeah. about. Uh, well, we've been talking about all kinds of different things. Uh, so, you know, definitely check out this debate. Uh, we're going to put it into our podcast and uh, link all of our guests in that description. But uh, as for you guys right now, I see that we have 72 likes and 244 people watching. Um, so once again, you know, if you guys have those arthritic wrists, I mean, you know, just just use your nose and hit that like button, whatever you have to do uh, to get this into the algorithm. So uh, let's continue on. D discovering, that was, yeah, we went through the uh, our submarines. Oh, my goodness. Uh, for $2 from Davigar says, the submarine, <laughs> I don't know, he's being a comedian. He said, the submarine will be invented in 2041 by a Mormon. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Davigar, thank you for, uh, thank you for thank some you humor God. there. You know, uh Back to the Lord of the Rings references. Speak friend and enter. Well, thank you so much for that, Davigar. Uh, that's uh, just kind of fun there. So Jolly Roger, $11 Canadian, uh, says, Kyle, you mentioned people getting an answer from God that the book is true. Do you think that experience is different from those who say God told them that the Quran is true? And if their experience is different or if different, so how? Or how so? Sorry. I haven't met many. I haven't met anyone so far that told them that the Quran is true. And so if they would like to have a discussion with me and talk about kind of their experiences that led them to that conclusion, I'd be more than happy to engage with that. You, you haven't met a Muslim. Like they all claim that the book is true. And the thing is that they've got exactly. That, the that's not that what he asked. The, the they ask is what, what about a person who has been told by God that the Quran is true. And I've, spoken yeah. with many muslims but i've never met a muslim that told me that god told them that the quran was true i've seen a lot of people say oh well i think the the quran is true because of this this and this but that's not that's something different than god telling you that it's true has god told you the book of mormon is true yes um how do you know it was god how do I know it's got, that's a really good question but i can only point to experience with that and so there's a lot of different voices out there and uh learning about you know which uh the as the savior taught my sheep hear my voice and they know me and so the only way we can know the voice of the savior is through experience and uh, it takes years to distinguish which voice is his but you can't be sure can you because if you've only heard one voice then you can't be sure that that there's not another voice out I, there. I don't claim heard. I've God. only heard one voice. Oh, just, you've heard multiple. I just said voices. there's many voices out there, and I've definitely heard many uh -huh. different voices. And so, right. Yeah. So, how do you know that the one that you think is God is God? There's a distinguishing factor uh, with that. the one that is God, and uh, yeah. When I think about just going to church and some of like the really powerful moments, uh, such as for me, it was in the military when I was seeing the night and day difference between the military culture and suddenly being able to go back to church and while I was in the army and having that experience to just sing there, the spirit of God, like a fire is burning. And I felt on fire. It was like throughout my whole body and I could just feel God singing with me that, yeah. The, the spirit of God, like a fire is burning, is a very powerful moment. And So how uh, do you know that wasn't a um, infinitely powerful demon that's out to trick you? Uh, yeah, if, if so, then it was a pretty convincing. But I don't, I, I don't so think don't know. demons are out there uh, teaching people to love. And the, yeah, it's just, like I said, experience. Might be. Building Might be just luring into a, a false demon. sense I, of security. That's not really a, that's not a, a definition. But you don't demon. know for sure, do you? You don't know for sure because there's no reason why sure. an infinitely powerful demon couldn't sort of trick you in some way oh for sure there's there yeah tricks can happen out there and i don't deny that and so oh, so you're not yeah. sure okay um about that i just said that there's an ex a, a level of experience and so that's all i'm that's all i make that's all I'm but it could be a demon it could be a demon. you've already said it could be a demon that's fine yeah. you know you're not sure yeah you're not sure okay let's move yeah. on Alrighty, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. let's scroll on up, and 
That was Jolly Roger. Thank you so much for the super chat. Ozion Talks, $2. Why did God send other men to die, but not you? Why did thing. other men send... What? I'm sorry. Can, can you ask that question again? I think he's asking I think in context he's of, the, about, yeah. of your military services there. So you can choose not to answer that where it's kind of a personal question, not really related to the subject entirely. But he is, you know, the whole idea of why did God send other men to die? Or you, you can even address just the broader question. Why would God send people to die? Uh, if you don't want to talk directly about, you know, your experience. Oh, it wasn't my story. That was it. And so it wasn't my story. Uh, there was part of their story, but not part of my story. All right. We can move on from there. Uh, thank you so much, Ozion. Uh, Jolly Roger, thanks again. 550 Canadian. Kyle, does believing your coworker went to university require the same amount of faith, belief, slash knowledge as believing Jesus was resurrected? So believing your coworker went to university uh, versus believing Jesus was resurrected. Um, so they're saying that, does that require the same amount of faith or knowledge? I'd say so. Really? Yeah. So if I said I went to university, do you think that would require the same level of faith or knowledge than if somebody, if I said I rose from the dead? Why not? Um, it's it's because people often go to university and, and enroll in university. Um, people don't often rise from the dead. Um, so um, if, if you said, hey, I went to university, I'd go, okay, cool, no problem. Um, if, if you said you rose from the dead, I'd be like, I would need more evidence for that because that's not something that happens ever that I've ever According seen. to your knowledge. Sure, okay. sure. What else would I base it on? Oh, that's all you can go off of is your knowledge. And so yeah. Right, right. So if if I'm going to tell you, hey, you've got to worship me because I rose from the dead, and you just believe that, that's a problem for you, Kyle. Well, Jesus never said worship me because I rose from the dead. So yeah. But but if that was the case, like if I said, Hey, I, I rose from the dead, you would just believe that. Or if I said, I'm a prince from Nigeria, you would just believe that. Uh, I didn't say that either. So, yeah. Okay. Well, it just, it's, it's a really weird way to sort of evaluate claims as if somebody doing something supernatural and going to university are sort of require the same amount of evidence. Oh, well, it really kind of comes down to, uh, building a relationship of trust with that person, doesn't it? Well, I've got a bridge to sell you, Kyle. Okay. Let's move on. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, so up we go again. Uh, keep those super chats coming in, everybody. Because, uh, we're having lots of uh, fun having this discussion. Uh, once again, we have a question uh, kind of related to your uh, military service there. So uh, uh, y you can kind of choose to address the broader idea rather than talk about personal experiences. Uh, Kyle, how do you know God wanted you to join the military and not fight because you were skipped and God wants you to join and you were skipped fighting because of your religion. I'm not sure if that was worded very well. Uh, uh, Zaxorin, sorry, for 10 euros. Uh, thank you so much. So how do you know God wanted you to join the military and not fight because you were skipped and God wants you to join and you were skipped, uh, sk you skipped fighting because of your religion? Well, there was a lot of miracles that took place between then and there and so then in the end of it. And so, and I kind of walked through them. I remember going through basic training and I got sick one day and, uh, and I was like, okay. And I was kind of nervous because if you get sick in the military, they could recycle you, which means they, they send you all the way back to the beginning and you have to spend the entire next summer doing the same stuff all over again. And it takes like three months. And so I'm like, oh, and I was getting all nervous. And, uh, so I ended up going on to the sick bay and uh which is military intelligence let me tell you you, you get someone gets a tooth pulled and they end up going to sick bay and they're surrounded by a, bunch, a whole bunch of other sick people and so if you're not sick and you go to sick bay then you come out being sick and it's just messed up but anyways um anyway i get sent off to sick bay and uh while i was there there's a person that i needed to talk to he was interested in reading more about the book of mormon i had the 
a unique opportunity to invite him to go to church and uh, to come kind of answer some of his questions regarding the Book of Mormon. Uh, after that experience, I got better like immediately. And then I was able to go back to work. And so there was kind of a, a, it was a really neat experience for me to see that I needed to be in a certain place and do a certain thing in order to kind of fill fulfill a divine mandate and then kind of watch my life yeah immediately change afterwards and so that well, happened was an again powerful demon that wanted somebody else to die so they stopped you from going so someone could die in your place um if, if you believe in demons sure <laughs> oh i don't yeah i don't okay so therefore uh, that kind of outrules that claim doesn't it according on your terms well no if you if you believe in demons then it could be possible right well, it depends on your. Uh, why would why would demons existing demons? depends on depend on whether I believe in it or not? Well, you're you're the one claiming it could be this, and if you don't believe that, then that kind of invalidates your claim that it could be this. No, so you're the one making the claim. Logic, it's not logically impossible in your worldview. So this um, is an internal. But that, you're the one who's suggesting that it could be, and so I don't think you sure. should be saying it could be if you don't believe that is the case at all. So let's move. What's on. logically impossible about it? What's wait, you're about your claim? I'm not claiming that. I'm saying that it's possible that it could be a demon. I'm not claiming that is the case, but it is. Oh, possible. so you, you believe demons are possible now? Well, sure. Okay, great. Let's move on. I don't believe that they exist, but I'm not saying they're logically impossible. I'm just saying, yeah, I, I, I think that just moves that just that takes you out of the atheist category and puts you into agnostic. So, how so? Um, that's my understanding of atheist is someone who does not believe that there is a God and, uh, yeah. there, and then, and an agnostic is someone who believes there could be a God, but they don't really know. It's a possibility, so but just don't really what know. What part of, did you miss when I said, I believe there are no demons? Like what part of that did you miss? You believe that there are no demons. I thought you just said it was a possibility. I said that it's logically possible. It's logically possible. Okay, there we go. Them. There we go. I didn't, you don't have to believe in them. You just have to say that it's possible. It, they, not to be yeah. an atheist. All I have to do is not uh, is believe there are no gods to be an atheist under the strictest definition. Oh. And I, I believe as there it, are no as gods. As my understanding is kind of like a much more definitive claim. Maybe maybe my definition is wrong and I'm open to that. If of atheist is somebody no who claims idea. there is no God as a certain fact. And that's the difference. The, no, the, the no, because theism is about belief. That's what theism is, is about belief. Theism from belief in the Greek. Theism from the belief. Okay. Yeah, Let's it means belief. All righty. Let's continue on there. Uh, yeah, keep those super chats coming in. Uh, we're having a great time here, having a conversa conversation there on uh, is the Book of Mormon scientific? Uh, we have been going a little bit over time, so uh, you know it's my common courtesy. Oh, sorry, I'll keep the comments to myself. Though. No, you're good. You're good. I think everything's fine in that regard, but I will check with both of you to make sure that you guys are okay for time. So, Mark, are you good for yeah, time? Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Kyle. Yeah. All right, cool. And uh, did either of you want to get a refreshment or uh, go relieve yourselves? Uh, uh, I've got water. I'm good. All right. Okay. Well, I might I might skip out at some point because I gotta I gotta use the uh, the old. We won't get into it. Uh, but uh, let me just get the next chat up here before we get to that. All right. So everybody's agreed to stay a little bit longer so that's awesome thanks everybody in the uh, live chat for coming out uh you know i'm glad that we don't have a whole bunch of uh spammers and uh awful awful uh copy paste uh stuff don't don't use that as an opportunity i swear people i'll start blocking no anyways and give a like while you're there yes <laughs> I like, you know what? You're pressing it. I like it. Uh, so yeah, let's continue on. Um, Jolly Roger, 550 Canadian. Again, Kyle, can you empathize as to empathize as to why Mark may be frustrated as to why he came to this debate with the def definition he did? Can I empathize with that? I understand that he kind of came to a debate where he might have had an impression of, that this debate was going to be something other than it was because he didn't read the title of the debate. 
Pilot of the by, Night wasn't. By the dictionary. It is, is the is the Book of Mormon yeah. a scientific book? The, the title it, of the that, night so, is not not what is the definition of scientific. That wasn't that is exactly what it is. It's what is the definition it's, of scientific and does the Book of Mormon qualify <laughs> under that definition? That is exactly what, what the title is. What does the debate topic say? What is the debate? Book of Mormon is a scientific book, which states that that the word science (laughs) or scientific, uh, it uses the word and says this qualifies by this definition. Okay, so so look, Kyle, I basically said the topic of the debate was not what is the definition of scientific, and you said it was. You're not in reality at this point. No, it's not. The title of the debate is, is the Book of Mormon scientific? That is literally the debate title. Like, you, you, your facts seem to go, well, I'm going to see whatever I want to see and whatever I feel like I want to see. Like, the the debate topic is I, not I'm the one what who wrote the definition the, of I am scientific. the one who wrote the debate topic. So I am the one who gets to say, as the author, exactly what it means. No, and that is exactly what it means. No, yes, it is. Don't. That no, is the power don't. of the author. Thank you. Did everybody behave <laughs> while I was gone? Like, can I have some of whatever you're like? Seriously, just because I say, okay, we're going to debate the flood, I'm going to take that to mean birds. Like, are you serious? Like, what is wrong with that? <laughs> I, okay, well, if you could... Yeah, you can you can go ahead and make a huge case for that and say this is in your like opening the statement, craziest that, debate I have had in so long. This has been welcome to my world. So, yeah. So uh, when it comes to as an author, if you wanted to take the word uh, flood and define it as birds, you have the power to do so. And so when you make your opening statement, you can say, okay, birds or sorry, the flood. Uh, the flood in this instance is specifically referring to birds, uh, like a flood of birds. Okay. And you could specifically say that in your opening statement. And then as me coming to your debate, hearing your opening statement, then I that can is, say, okay, I disagree with that. And your that power isn't how up. that isn't how debates work. And it's not your debate, Kyle. It is I'm you, the one who don't is the get, one who made the invitation. You don't get to challenge somebody on a topic and then say because You're I wrote me. it, I, I made get the statement. to write down what it means, and it means this other thing that it doesn't say. Wow, I, I, I it's I, an adjective, and I decide, and this I, is the state. This is a noun. This is the adjective, and this adjective describes this noun. And according oh, to the dictionary, Kyle. which I defined in my opening statement, and so I'm Kyle. going by these definitions, and so. I'm the one making the opening statement. You're the one who's stepping in and saying, no, uh, that is wrong. And that's all you can do. That's uh, that's your side of the debate. And so if you come in here and try to uh, reform an entirely new debate, that is called the red herring. It's And, and it's separate from, you're, you're not no, the, the, the problem my is claim. What you've got in your mind and what you've put down as the debate and what we're going to discuss are not the same thing. Like it's if you wanted to thing. discuss is the definition the of scientific, scientific well, yeah. Yeah. no, if Let's... you wanted to discuss is what the definition of scientific is, put that as the debate topic. And I probably would have said, no, I'm not debating that because I don't do definitional debates well, that's it's exactly crazy. what you signed so, up for so let's no let's con- it is. is it scientific <laughs> that is a Let, definitional debate let's no, continue on let's continue on from scientific here because word, uh yeah. we definitely uh understand that you guys kind of uh, can i have... say one thing i, I sure. choose to reject your reality and substitute my own there you go there's go okay let's, okay let's hear the mod uh, so I was going to say, uh, yeah, I think we've kind of uh, established that uh, you guys disagree on uh, that kind of fundamental principle uh, about the debate topics. So, um, you know, let's uh, let, let's try to get down into the uh, the gritty of what we can get out of our super chats here um, and see where we go with that. But uh, I think that point's been established. So uh, we'll just uh, try to carry on from there, if uh, you gentlemen don't mind. Um, so... Uh, Zar Zarzarin? Zar Zar Zaxon? I don't know. Five dollars. Cats eat food. That's an absolute truth. But my cat also eats couch. No proof. Just opinion. What is your cat doing eating your couch? That's probably not good for them, but uh, cats eat grass sometimes. Cats eat all kinds of things. I've seen cats like chew on furniture. <laughs> 
Yeah. No, I I, I definitely uh, understand that. So, uh, yeah, cats cats will eat anything, you know. Um, yeah, let's. Right. Take I've got a cat that will eat talkies. <laughs> talkies. Yeah. I can't. And cats eat food is wrong. I can't have talkies anymore. I went to Mexico and I got sick on the travel, and that was all I had was some talkie. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, and you, yeah, no. Anyways, I won't make everybody sick, but yeah, it was a bad time. All right, Lael for $20. Thank you so much. Mark, I am the same religion as Kyle. And if I would mm -hmm. agree, if I would agree with the definition of scientific method, and this method cannot be used to verify the story of either about how they came to this content by submarine. This is very, okay. So, so there's there's no problem if you think that if you believe in the Book of Mormon, there's no problem if you think it's true. I don't have a problem with that. It's no it's no great big deal. It, the, the problem is thinking that the book is scientific. So I don't want to sort of say, hey, you shouldn't believe that, or or this this book is is you know somehow something that you shouldn't believe. No, it's just it's not a scientific book. That's all. Um, just like the the Quran isn't a scientific book. The Bible isn't a scientific book. Um, that there are scientific books out there, and Lord of the Rings is not one of them. I'm sorry, it just isn't. Um, you have to. And it's, you have it's to dismiss my definition. Kind of having a debate that. that that um you know, well, I mean, yeah, you're kind of appealing to dictionary to appeal to appeal to definition fallacy. That's my what, what that's my opening done. statement, um, which is actually by this logic. definition it qualifies. I thought the question was for from me. I I didn't know is it was it? for you, Kyle. Well, um, it says, Mark, I am the same religion as Kyle. So, yeah. It's it a is statement. A it's not really a question, is it? Kyle, what is wrong with you? It's a question to me and you're just jumping in. It's like, not a I question. Want... There was no question. To... There's no question. Yeah, but that. I'm talking about it. Like, what is, you're what is happening here? I'm having a conversation. Well, with... well, let's, let's like, before... When you were answering questions, well, I wasn't interrupting you. What, well, well let's, just bring, let's just bring this it all down. Let's just bring it all oh, down. This we're is gonna, crazy. <laughs> we're gonna, um, we'll kick it back to you, Mark. For yeah, so, seconds, so you can believe in the Book of Mormon. And and it is an appeal to definition fallacy that 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 has to be the definition because you've read it in a dictionary. It's a it's a logical fallacy and therefore it's completely irrational. Go, Kyle. You can say whatever you want now. I finished. You're welcome to say that. Okay, but that doesn't make it proof or true. All right. Uh, lots, uh, yeah, lots more uh, super chats coming in. Keep them coming. Uh, the debaters that we have here, uh, Kyle and Mark, uh, they both consented to stay a little bit longer. Uh, so as long as we have questions and uh, things to talk about, we're going to keep this conversation going. So, um, do 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 do. See, I keep scrolling around. I got to get rid of some of these now. Um, Hill Hugger, five dollars. Kyle. Is it possible to design an experiment to falsify an extraordinary claim within the Book of Mormon? Is it possible to false to design a, an experiment to falsify it? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, is it possible to? Yeah, it sounds like whoever's asking this question is falling into the popper philosophy of science which uh, claims that it must be falsifiable. But Kuhn, the philosopher in science, claims that science does not have to be falsifiable. Uh, and so he gets into this huge thing on that. That um, Paradigms are things that people are not questioning. And so uh, they, they just mark it as an anomaly and they move on. So yeah, if something is falsifiable, yeah, that's not really a requirement for science. Now, is can you prove it wrong? And then I'd say, yeah. And that's kind of what Alma kind of, uh, he encouraged us to do, just like planting a seed. If you can, you can know for a fact that this seed is not a good seed if it doesn't grow. If you can say, that, okay, that's a terrible seed. And you can know that this is a bad plant if it doesn't bear any fruit. And uh, that was the huge invitation from Alma in Alma chapter 32. It said, you can judge a tree by its fruit and so what is the fruit of the book of mormon okay and that is what we look for and so if it doesn't bear any fruit then by all means discard it that's that's what he said all right any thoughts on that mark before we continue on 
Yeah, so so Kuhn doesn't really sort of dismiss falsifiety altogether. He certainly embraces verificationism, which which still requires some sort of systematic basis for evaluating whether a claim is true or false. Um, Do you... So um, he doesn't... So um, the, the verifiability principle sort of says that um, it has to be supported by empirical evidence and um, um, or, or logical requirements. And so even under Kuhn's sort of offbeat, and, and he was sort of from the, the 40s, like his, his sort of um, a, a bit outdated, but never mind. But even according to his strict thing, the, the Book of Mormon still wouldn't be scientific, even according to Kuhn. Do you agree with Kuhn's philosophy of incommensurability? No. You don't agree with that? No. Which is the same thing as Popper's claim that, claiming that science never proves anything. And so I don't see how I, they're kind of like the same concept. Science never proves anything in incommensurability. Incommensurability for the audience is just the claim that you can never measurably prove that one paradigm is better than another. And so we could say uh, we've got uh, the Book of Mormon uh, and uh, the whole paradigm of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, that whole no. religion versus Catholic, no. Catholicism. And you can't systematically or measurably prove that one is better than the other. Or you can say the same thing. For no, Christianity. no. But the, 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 OK, but the, here's where you're, you're wrong, because um, Kuhn's saying that you can't prove the old paradigm with the new one, right? That the new paradigm's got to prove itself by getting better results than the old one, but you can't prove the new one with the old paradigm because then you're relying on the old paradigm to provide support for the new one. You're still using that old paradigm, but you can still prove or, or demonstrate that the new one's better by getting better results and more reliable results by using that paradigm. It's incommensurability is immeasurable. That's kind of what the word yes. means. Yes, you can't kind of the measure the new paradigm with the old one. Against the old one. And so you're trying to determine yes. which one is better. And so, But yeah, that doesn't mean you can The can't... professor from Leiden University went and specifically said that you can't know which paradigm is better. That I'm getting everything just from him. Uh, who, who said it yeah really I, I i don't i don't agree with that i don't I, I think that you can use science to prove that there is a better method than science i think you can do that you believe science can prove things now that there is a better method yes yeah. okay so that contradicts your former claim with against dr mclaughlin who said that science never proves anything yeah but... we're talking about logical systems here not not just sort of individual models right we're talking about sort of like maths it's a logic system right so, okay so like in maths where you have proofs you can say this thing has a proof because its logical system can have a proof associated with it much like when you give proofs for syllogisms and things like that you can you can structure it in such a way that you can provide proofs but like looking at those things you're not doing experimentation and things like that you're not creating a model all right simply... well i think i think cats eat food is a pretty observable logical statement and oh you disagree you, you then... said your cat um, ate furniture as well so that that is not a true statement uh -oh. uh, by the dictionary definition of eat okay to chew on to digest that qualifies mm -hmm. thank you well, you probably chowed down on some cloth and digested it, so, yeah. Well, let's continue on from there. Um, yep, cats will eat anything. We have established yep. that. Uh, I'll just let everybody know in the live chat, too, uh, that I, I have a new song that I'm working on for Modern Day Debate. I've been uh, contemplating whether I should try playing a little bit of it at the end of this because uh, my friend just uh, uploaded the track. So you can let me know in the live chat if you want a little after show and maybe I'll uh, play a little tune for you fellas. Uh, but if not, then that's fine too, because uh, maybe, like I was going to say to you earlier, Mark, the latency uh, may uh, may cause some issues with my audio as far as like guitar to uh, to uh, the actual track. So eh, we'll, uh, we might give it a go. Uh, it can always get clipped. Let's audio is pretty low bandwidth. It should be fine. It should be fine. <laughs> 
Yeah, it could be fun. I was going to say, uh, but let's continue on for now. Forte, $5. I need to hear it. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, you know, you'll hear it probably plenty once uh, once I send it over to James once it's done. But uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see uh, how long it takes for us to wrap this up and what time it is here. Uh, so let's see. Forte, $5. Why do people tend to lose their religiosity as they become more educated? Who's that for? Well, I think uh, whoever wants to jump on that, we can uh, get into that. So whether you think that's true or whether you have an explanation for why that could be true or why it is true, why you think it's true. Uh, It's a loaded question, okay, to start off. Okay, some people actually get more religious as they become more educated. And uh, it really kind of gets into how they define educated. I'm not the author, and so I'm not going to claim that exactly how they're defining the word educated. But for me, you don't have to go to school in order to become educated. In fact, my professors at Dixie State University told me, don't let school get in the way of your education. And that right there tells me that education is not about the building or or organization that you're learning from. It's just a process of learning. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I agree that you don't have to go to university and stuff to be educated. The, the problem is that there's a lot of misinformation out there. And if you just go to certain sources like the internet, it's, it's hard to distinguish what is correct and what is incorrect. So that's where sort of having a um, sort of academic background or sort of the academic process and the scientific process taught to you, you can critically think about information and sort of find out what is true and what is most likely true. Now, I know that they're speaking generally. I won't, I won't certainly won't disagree that certain people become educated, they become more religious, but generally speaking, people that do get educated become less religious. And I can probably find some studies to back that up. Um, I think the reason is because Um, A lot of the times um, religion requires a gap of knowledge in order to insert a God. So um, if you don't understand how the universe was created, a God might fill that role. If you don't understand, you know, the formation of the earth or any of these principles, a God might fill that role. But when you start to learn and understand the reasons why we know um, or humans have figured out these things occur and understand the scientific principles that have led us to believe what we do, um, it becomes a lot harder to believe that that a God is doing all of this. Um, so I think it is the, the teaching of critical thinking that is um, sort of, you know, the reason why religion rates are on the decline so much, especially in new generations coming up. All right. And... Uh... Kyle, I think you... academia itself is trying to, it's a kind of an indoctrination program. And so a lot of the teachers out there are kind of trying to steer people away from, from, I think there's kind of a separation of church and state that kind of goes in there. And so, uh, yeah, it's not really, and so I think that kind of ends up pulling. So if they're, if they're defining education as academia, then I think that would be a major, uh, attribute or a factor a major factor is the whole separation of church and state well i think that um academics don't sort of teach you what to think um they sort of set you up so you can think as carl said these teachers were saying don't let your education get in the way into thinking and that's exactly what they mean don't just think something because we told you use that critical thinking process to analyze it for yourself and they give you the tools to do so like I, I said, wish, the book I that wish I showed you that they hello, hello, that hello just in the middle of talking right. here. Like, I'm, I'm, seriously. I'm, I'm, I'm commenting um, on what you're talking about. And yeah. Well, could you wait till I finished? Would be a. I, I'm sorry. I'm not used uh, to this whole monologue um, thing. I I didn't. I, what? I, <laughs> this baffles my mind. I let you talk. And then when go I talk, finish. you say go I'm monologuing. It's, 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 go ahead and finish. Wow. Um, okay. So, so, so the book that I showed, for instance, with all of the, 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 you know, sort of um, electronic circuits and things like that, all of the truth tables, all of the things we do in, in um, com- sort of digital communications and uh, computer architecture, they show you how to design that, how to think about it, how to do it. They don't just tell you, hey, this is the only way. In fact, they like you to think beyond that box kind of thing, but in a critical way, not just believe anything you're told. That, that's all I want. My my science textbook says the Earth is the globe because we said so, and uh, yeah, and I've got a whole series on that called Modern Earth really? Science Destroyed, just pointing out 
all of the times that this book just makes all these definitive statements and expects you to go off of it because they said so and they they don't encourage you to ask questions for yourself just believe it because we said so that's it what did, so what that's a do? huge problem what did huh? you do in university what did i do in university i yeah. and did, i i got a, that was part of my generals but i'm actually just picking apart like a, a typical high school that's my my uh my series modern or science destroyed is just picking up a typical high school science textbook oh. and just picking that apart because that's exactly yeah. the way they teach it and so well they yeah. won't they won't do that in in sort of you know that's not true either i university. can point to i can point to a college uh geology textbook or you, you know astrology and they just tell you yeah. well the sun is this far away because we said so they don't tell you uh they don't encourage you to to doubt that they don't encourage uh, you to think for yourself on that matter. They just say, "Yeah, but they tell you." Sun why. is this many ninety-three million miles away, and that's it. They expect they, you. To they tell you why, up. like parallax movements, the distance that light travels. Um, that there's a lot of reasons for why. But it, and they're saying that, uh, yeah, just trust us on that. That's it. They, they don't. They don't say this could be the case. They say it is the case. All right. Well. Let's Let's continue on from there. Jolly Roger, uh, 550 again, Canadian. Kyle, does consensus of scholarship mean anything to you, or do they have the same knowledge authority as anyone else? A consensus in scholarship is just a book of the month club kind of a thing. It's kind of a consensus is a bunch of people uh, adhering to the same kind of manner of belief. And so I can say uh, in my paradigm, I can just point to uh, the Latter-day Saints and I can point to the apostles and prophets and say, hey, there's a consensus here. Okay. And that's part of this paradigm. And so you can point to all these people who believe in one thing. And I just see that as a group of people who are following a systematized organization or a group of beliefs. So that's no different than religion to me. All righty. Oh, let's see here. Uh, Simbi, Skuggy, $5. Kyle, as a former 19D, can you please elaborate on your military claims? Were you RA or Reserve or NG? They let you leave for NG, two years? NG, I was 13 Bravo. What MOS were you? you 13 to... Bravo. Okay. So I say, you didn't have to answer all that because it's very it's okay. personal stuff. So NG is National Guard. 13 Bravo is uh, Cannon uh, Build Artillery. All right, very cool. Well, thank you for that. And oh, let me just pull that there. You're field artillery, and you didn't have to, like, you, you didn't use adjustments for the curvature of the Earth. Amazing, right? Yeah, that's true. I never had to adjust for any kind of curvature of the Earth, and we could shoot a a, a garbage can from twenty miles away, dead on, over the horizon. All right, well, let's continue on. Uh, so, uh, Zion Talks, $2. Smugly citing a dictionary is still smug and oof. So, okay. any comments there? No. No? Okay. Uh, Kyle, uh, Zach Zarin, 10 euros. If you want something to happen, pray. It will happen. If it does happen, God does not. If if it does not happen, God does not want it to happen. Where is your evidence for that conclusion? Um, we don't say prayers to command God what to do. We say prayers to allow our uh, our will to become in harmony with God's will, and to kind of develop that relationship. And that's what it's, that's the whole purpose of prayer. Yeah, so to me, it's basically just, um, it's called the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. It's basically taking all of the hits as reasons why it works and ignoring all of the misses. So if you pray for everything all your life and, you know, things happen for you, you'll see that as, yes, it it, it works without seeing all the times you've prayed for something and it hasn't worked. Um, I don't feel like yeah, that's the textbook- anything I said. Okay. Textbook Texas Sharpshooter. Yeah, I was just sort of that's, addressing that's why if people you command think God to do is. things, then that would be the case. Yeah, I was just sort of um addressing why um prayer doesn't sort of people think that prayer works. It's because that it only works because your Texas sharpshooter accusation only applies uh-huh. to someone who is 
thinks prayer is all about commanding God what to do. Uh, didn't didn't say that. Uh, that's the application to it. I I can't see any other application where it could be guilty of that accusation. No, because if you think it works, you're counting all the hits and you're dismissing all the misses. That is commanding God what to do, and that's a hit, right? If I command God to to go and open this door and that door opens, then uh, then that would be a hit. And if I command God to, yeah, to command the door to open and the door doesn't open, then that is a miss, right? And so, no, but if you ask God that you want the door to open and it opens, that's a hit. If you ask God, could he please open the door and it doesn't, that's a miss. But you're counting all the hits and you're ignoring all the misses. The same thing happens if you just ask. Okay. All right. Well, let's continue on. Uh, so Jolly Roger, 550 Canadian again. Thanks, Jolly Roger. Uh, Kyle, when you were asked to debate this topic, did you truly think it was about uh, it, oh, sorry, did you truly think it was about if, I think that's what they meant, if things were chronologically organized? So did you think the debate was really about uh, whether things were chronologically organized? That is why I wrote that in my opening statement. That's I wrote it down beforehand. So yes, that is exactly what I came to the dis- debate for. That's why I made the opening statement and tell you what the opening statement is and exactly what we're debating against. All right, uh, let's continue on. Zark Zaren, five euros. Uh, Kylie claim there is no evidence. This is not true. Uh, that was, they were responding to somebody else in the chat there, it seems. Uh, there is no evidence. This is not true. Does not prove your claim is true. But there is a difference in probability. I can't claim any kind of probability unless I can take everything into account and so if something is not numbered there is no probability okay any thoughts on that mark uh sorry i do apologize what was the question uh there is no evidence this is not true does not prove your claim is true but there is a difference in probability yeah so so a lack of evidence doesn't um but so so a lack of evidence is an and sorry an, an absence of evidence is not evidence of absence unless we expect to find evidence like if you go to um your letterbox and there's no mail in there um that doesn't mean you don't have mail and like you can't prove that but the la- it should be there so it kind of does um you the the lack of evidence for all of these cities means that it is highly probable they never existed because we are missing evidence that should be there so this whole idea that no evidence you can't you know it's not good evidence well yeah sometimes it is when we absolutely expect it to be there okay um yeah any thoughts on that kyle or do you want to continue on i think i shared what i had to say on that If, if, if there's no numbers if it's not if it's yeah, if you can't number it, you can't claim that there is a probability to it. Okay. All right. Well, let's continue on. Uh, Zark Saren, uh, Kyle, your body was burning, in quotations. So God wants you to burn for your desire, not take part of killing, or to not take part of killing. I, what? Were they, I don't think that's even a complete thought. I'm not sure. I think uh, it's. They've got a couple other questions here. So, uh, yeah, Zark Zarin, if you want to kind of clarify what you meant in the chat there, uh, we're going to continue on because uh, I'm not sure what you meant. Your body was burning, so God wants you to burn for your desire not to take part of killing or to not take part of killing. Yeah, that's it's not really making sense to me here. So um, if you guys can't piece it together, we'll wait for uh, C uh what's going on then maybe maybe he desired you to do something but not take part of in killing is that is that what they're trying to say i joined the military fully expecting to get deployed at the time that was a a huge expectation i had and so when i did not get deployed for three deployments and kind of looking back on that i just said wow that's kind of uh 
kind of walking through a battlefield and not getting shot. Okay. So maybe they mean why did God push you to join at all just to stop you from being deployed? Like why didn't he just not push you to join the military at all? Well, I told you when I joined the military, I got a ten thousand dollar sign on bonus. You know what I did with that sign on bonus? It paid for my mission, my two year mission to East LA to go and preach the gospel out there. So yeah, that was really useful money coming out of somewhere. And in the meantime, I got paid to get a workout, which is amazing. So that was what I kept telling myself all throughout basic training, getting paid to get a workout. A lot of people pay, uh, pay other people to go out and join a gym and here the gym has come to me and they're paying me to join this gym. Amazing. God, God wanted you to bulk up. It's your, okay, sure. All right, well, let's continue on. Uh, let's see. The real Mad Dog Mac, 999. How do you reconcile discovery that Native Americans do not share a single shred of DNA with any Jewish lineage? Doesn't this alone disprove the claim natives are descendant from the 12 tribes of Israel? Does it disprove it? Or, I don't know, that's kind of going off this whole basis of science proving things. And so even though I do believe that science does prove things, I haven't seen any any actual papers or anything like that to actually go off of to confirm or disfirm, di, uh, disconfirm that, that claim. All right. Well, let's continue on. Some people just do sloppy work and say, oh, well, I've measured a few people and that, that automatically goes out to every single Native American out there. And I don't think... Every single Native American out there has really under, undergone this test. So, yeah, that's kind of my view on it. And so if they'd like to substantiate their claim that this is the case, then we can talk about it. Wasn't the land uninhabited when they got there? And it was the they Lamanites never said that. that, that um, wasn't it the Lamanites that sort of that, like the Native Americans were supposed to descend from the Lamanites? Um, many did, but it never says that it was uninhabited. And so, yeah. All it right. says that the Nephites were, uh, they went extinct. They they all got demolished. Uh, but it never says that the native, that the land was uninhabited or that no other people came to the Americas after they got here. All right. Well, let's continue on there. Uh, Jolly Roger, $11 Canadian. Kyle, when you set up the debate and chose the definition, did you have a hunch or idea that Mark wasn't going to use the same? As you say, you set this debate up and got set, uh, got to set the definition in your opening? I set the, the definition in my opening statement, and uh, that way there would be no question of the terms of this debate in that opening statement. Great. Um, yeah, and the other part of that was, uh, did you have uh, an expectation that Mark would share that definition? Well, his job as being an opponent is to discredit my my statement and say, no, that's not the case. Even if I'm saying cats are mammals, okay. Okay, if he comes to a debate against me and my opening statement is cats are mammals, then it's his job to say, no, they're not. Yeah, so I, I did do that. I pointed out where he was going wrong in his definitions. I pointed out from science textbooks where the definition was different. I pointed out that the definition was distant, different from different sources. So, yeah. yeah. I, I and so I said I, that I the dictionary says it. this, and it's his job to say, no, the dictionary does not say that. Appeal to definition fallacy. I'm just reading the statement from the yeah. appeal I, I to see definition. You have no fallacy. substantiation for that claim. You're you're appealing to a definition, right? You haven't you haven't that's the opening statement of saying that this definition, but just because I'm saying oh, that this word is defined as that does not automatically make it get are to you. Are you are you appealing fallacy. to a defin are you appealing to a definition? Okay. Just appealing to a definition does not make it uh -huh. a fallacious claim. So there's more to that definition of appeal to de definition fallacy. That's just a title. Okay, that doesn't mean that saying this word is defined this way is a fallacious reason. Okay. It's, yeah. So it's an erroneous definition. So kind of Texas sharpshooter. Okay. Oh well, you're shooting a gun. That doesn't 
<laughs> yeah, just because you can say the name of a fallacy doesn't mean the the it's guilty of that crime. Well, I, I think people can decide for themselves whether yes, you know, they can, and they can look up the definition of appeal to to definition and make their own uh, case on that. Alrighty. So we're getting close to the end of our super chats here. So, uh, you know, everybody awesome. keep them coming on in if you uh, want the conversation to keep going. Uh, but uh, if not, we're going to wrap it up here pretty soon. Dragon for six euros. Mark, can you elaborate a bit on the black and white thinking we've witnessed today? It kind of seems to me that this is where it goes wrong in Kyle's thinking. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people in, in religion have this kind of black and white Well, either you know definitively or you don't know definitively. And there's no sort of levels of confidence in knowledge. Like if we have an overwhelming amount of evidence, our confidence can be very high. But since we're honest, we can always say, hey, there's always a tiny possibility that we're wrong, like 0.000001% that we're wrong. So we don't say it is proof because that assumes 100% confidence. So um, it's because we're being honest. It is the dishonest person that will say, hey, I have to be right. I can't be wrong. I, you know, it, it's it's I know this 100 percent certainty. Um, they're, they're the ones that are usually um, sort of making a, a more extraordinary claim um, about knowledge than people that say, hey, you know, we, our confidence level is very high based upon these scientific principles. Um, they, they work for everything we use in technology today. That is why we have confidence in them. But we would never claim 100% certainty because that is unreasonable. Um, but, you know, and... so sort of being sort of using your honesty to sort of say, hey, we can't be 100% confidence in every anything and sort of say, well, you don't have proof, you can't say anything. I think that's really disingenuous. Oh, it's disingenuous to say my cat eats food. Okay, got it. All right, well, and make definitive claims uh, yeah, are that, that, that are that simple. Well, let's continue on. Uh, let's see. Um, Lil, $10 statement. I would never argue that uh, ether, either coming here in a submarine cannot be tested uh, the, by the scientific method. So I, Kyle, would agree with this statement. I'm not sure. Once again, that doesn't Ether leave very well. I was would the never... author of the book. It was Brother Jared who uh, ended up crossing uh, the oceans and the barges. Yeah, it was their descendant that wrote the book. It wasn't wasn't them that crossed. But just say Jared instead. Just just say Jared. Brother yeah. of Jared. Uh, okay. Well, the, his his actual name was Mahan Rai Moriankumar, uh, but people just call him the Brother Jared because it's easier. Um, well, just the two families, right? In in the submarine, like. Um, I think they're sort of saying um, you can't scientifically test it to see if it's true. Would you agree with that statement? I'm sorry, I didn't. What was the question? Well, the two families that crossed in the the barges that they called it in the book um, from um, the the Middle East to the Meso uh, uh, Americas, um, there's no way to scientifically test that to see if it's true, is there? Uh, Would you agree? Well, with there's that a lot of science that's pointing at the Olmecs, and we believe that it's very likely that the Olmecs were actually the Jaredites. Okay, do you have any evidence for that? The Olmecs, the Jaredites were completely wiped out, uh, and the Olmecs were also completely wiped out. So they're both two extinct civilizations that uh yeah that are fitting the right kind of time period and so yeah i think that that okay right place the right the uh the right time and uh the same thing happened to both of them so that's evidence well so, I, I do note that their um architecture all of their arts their um systems that they had in place their culture everything was different from a middle eastern culture that's why archaeologists don't believe uh, the olmecs the brother of jared never uh, no one claimed that the brother of jared was from the middle east where were they from exactly huh where were they it from it doesn't say i guess the, uh, i guess well actually uh was jared was from the, the middle east well, there was there was uh, the Tower of Babel, and that was kind of a, a thing. Uh, 
in there. And so uh, I guess you could say that he did travel from kind of that area. So that would be the Middle East. So I was wrong on that one. So I think that would suggest he was from the Middle East. All righty. Let's continue on. Um, Lyle, again, for $5, what can I do to test using natural things to test and see if the story of Ether coming to this land is true? What observable, testable things can you do about the book of Ether and whether it's true or not? Um, the biggest uh, thing with the Book of Mormon is always about building a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's yeah, another testament of Jesus Christ, and everything in the Book of Mormon points to him. And so as you come to know him better, it's through that relationship that you can know these things are true. And so uh, I, I know Mark pointed out in his opening statement, he brought up animals, and no one... Yeah, there, we're still discovering new animals every day. We we can't just, you know, lift up all of the Americas and uh, sift them out and say, okay, <laughs> there are no horses or something like that, okay, or elephants in, in Americas. But we we can't account for every single animal that's ever lived in the Americas. And so, th yeah, just because we're not aware of any uh, modern day examples of, oh, well, look, I found some uh, elephant bones in, in the Americas, okay, just because we can't point to any specific examples like that doesn't mean they never happened. And so a lot of science is kind of coming out today that are kind of pointing towards uh, different instances in the Book of Mormon. So uh, in a previous debate, I pointed out uh, the, the human sacrifice. Uh, and I've pointed out that being evidence of the Book of Mormon. But again, this whole uh, debate is not about whether or not there's evidence. It's about whether or not the Book of Mormon is systematic all righty yeah as i said evidence where we no evidence where we expect to find some that we should expect to find some of these animals we don't we find none of them whatsoever um so that's something we would expect to find and we don't also the civilizations we'd expect to find them we don't um, especially when it's supposed to be sort of a civilization of 1.5 million people it doesn't just vanish um so all of these are reasons why we the evidence sort of speaks against the um book being true um yeah, so it's kind of, and, and plus the whole idea that you should appeal to your your feelings of Jesus in your life, that's not empirical evidence, which is what they ask for. Empirical evidence is one stuff that you can touch and see and sort of use your senses to ascertain, not feelings. It's not empirical evidence. At all. Well, it's kind of like coming to know that my wife is a real person. <laughs> okay, And so I can know that my wife is a real person by having experiences with her, okay? those are tangible physical experiences with my wife and kind of, uh, yeah, actually meeting her, talking to her and having experiences with her. Those are all observable things, empirically observable things. And so if I wanted to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's not just feelings. It's also about observation. Okay. Uh, yeah. What observation. senses do you use? Senses. senses. Your eyes. Senses do you use? Your eyes. You see, you see Jesus Christ. I don't claim to have well, uh, in dreams. Uh, in dreams, I've I've seen him. Not dreams. in dreams, like when hey, that's empirical. You're talking about observation. Okay? No, no, empirical. You can observe senses. things in dreams, and I and I've got a whole series on in, on different things that I've seen in dreams <laughs> that have yeah come to pass in in very interesting ways. And so yeah, oh, dreams. Dear. Dreams can be interpreted, and dreams can sometimes tell the future. Maybe you should have defined what empirical means because you've got a different def definition of empirical that is our senses like sight and touch and hearing like and, and your dreams don't count for that spectral evidence, not empirical evidence. Okay, well, when we actually physically see different things come to pass, okay, uh, and while we are conscious and awake, that is empirical evidence of something that we saw in a dream and so i saw in a dream uh yeah uh one thing and then it comes to pass that's empirical evidence um, wait. 
All right, let's move on from there. Jolly Roger, 550. We're almost to the end of our Super Chats here, everybody. So uh, we'll get wrapping up here pretty soon. Uh, you know, unless anybody has any other questions, pop them in the old live chat. Uh, Jolly Roger, 550 Canadian. Kyle, do you trust in the leadership of the Latter-day Saints Church, or do you question them? They report a real Adam and Eve. What do you think? I've provided a video showing my lineage going all the way back to Adam and Eve. And uh, I think that's evidence of Adam and Eve. I don't claim that's proof of Adam and Eve. I just call that evidence of Ad Adam and Eve. Uh, oh, I got to say that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's on there. Uh, you got to see my video on my relation to Bob Nodell. It's both of our, uh, our lineage going all the way back to Adam and Eve. It's pretty cool. So uh, it's worth, worth checking out. All right, any thoughts on that, Mark? Oh, yeah, there wasn't an Adam and Eve. Like, the population of, of humankind doesn't go to two people, even though they say that it does, it doesn't. Um, we can track this using DNA. The mitochondrial DNA shows there was no two people or origin, you know, or originating. Uh, the inbreeding that that would, would constitute would be horrendous as well, so, yeah. Already, uh, again, the, he's just making his statement on based on his thing. And so, if I said, "Yeah, cats are mammals," it's his job to say, "No, they are not." Okay, so um, Adam and Eve had children. Who did they um, have children with? Each other. And they're brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. And that's not inbreeding. I never said it wasn't. Okay. Okay. Next question. All right, let's continue on. Um, so, uh, coconut cream pie for two dollars says, "Dang, what's it? Calm down with the fallacies." I think they're uh, trying to accuse they're you. Trying of to me, probably. I think they. Yeah, I, I usually don't go on that much about fallacies, but I, I think that sort of when 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 you're in a debate about a topic and somebody's just saying hey my definitionary you know definition is the one that we're going to use because mine and and then sort of basing your entire argument on that is sort of a very um it's a very it's a very sort of weird way to debate anything um I, that's why i generally don't do debate de definitions about debate because there's no reason why anything can't be defined as anything usually we go for normative definitions not sort of one that you've cherry picked and said hey well this supports me so i'm going to cherry pick this one um the, the entirety of academia and science sort of agrees on what what constitutes science um i had to do science communications and and stuff when i went through uni um no no nobody's thinking lord of the rings is a science book i'm sorry it just nobody's thinking except, except kyle apparently I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody now <laughs> All right. Yeah, so and and sort of the really sort of weird stuff about proofs and things. I think it's because you know I, I usually don't point out fallacy, but the the ones that are being made are really grievous. So I kind of am pointing them out in this debate. Sure. Dictionary was written by nobody. Sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Oh, the dictionary was written by nobody. <laughs> because it was that's, written by nobody. That's that's yeah. They're the ones who defined it this way. It's, it's an accumulation of different usages of words throughout society. So um, all they do is see how people are using words in common parlance and in, you know, certain areas. And then. So that means some that people down. actually do. And all the, unless you're claiming all those people are nobody. There's, there's no reason why I can't call this cup, right? A Kyle. There's no inherent objective reason. All words are made up. Okay. All right. So your claim is that nobody used that word, and now you're kind of contradicting yourself because when you defined or described all these things, you're saying that it's all the dictionary is based off of people using them. So in order for that to be true, all those people who use it, the term scientific as just anything that is systematic, all of a sudden all those people are now nobody. Uh, sort of so so um people that aren't involved in science may very well use it like that it is incorrect right so that now we are kind of moving the goalpost and yeah okay no 
All right. Well, we're getting on to our last question here. So uh, it, in proper nerd fashion, which would make my wife very proud because she is... Uh, she is she is our DM. She is the uh, our, my uh, <laughs> she she's awesome. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do my best elusive viper here to uh, uh, to do you some justice here, and uh, I'm gonna use my old friend's uh, little piece that he left me here to uh, add to my impression. I wish I had a wizard's hat. Perhaps they Maybe. were not the Omex. Perhaps they were the elves who along with the Valar. <laughs> left the realm of men at the end of the third age <laughs> i mean you joke but it could have been dwarves you know being destroyed by smog because apparently dinosaurs were there too so you know because in the world that nothing is ever proven anything could be possible yep i get it oh i, I don't think that's true at all I think some things are not well, possible. Well, I mean, by, epistemically possible by or dr mclaughlin's words nothing can ever be described or should ever be described as true anyway so there you go uh you're you're sort of really mis mischaracterizing what he was saying there he Her, said in science like jacqueline mclaughlin in, in, in the scientific method we don't say this is a hundred percent categorically true so you should never up. use the word as true. i said before which is sort of patently avoid and and sort of uh sort of you know try and distract from is that science makes models that describe the world as somebody once famously said all models are incorrect some are useful so that's how we determine what works and what doesn't okay all righty well that was the last of our super chats everybody so uh yeah you can let me know in the live chat uh if uh if, if i'm gonna go through the effort here of uh, getting this uh track exported over to uh over to the uh, end of our show here for a little after after thing. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Mark Reed, Kyle Adams, uh, big thank you to you fellas for coming out and having this discussion. Uh, yeah, this has been a great time. Uh, after shot mine, after shot mine. Um, I've got it in the chat if you want to post it. And, and if you want, Ryan, sure. I'd, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, coming right up. All right, everybody, keep an eye out for me. I'm just going to post in the chat here. Uh, Mark's doing a little after show and I, I was going to say, I might be back in about, you know, two minutes here and I'll see if I can fire up uh, a little take of, uh, uh, what I'm trying to figure out for that, uh, that new intro for modern day debate. I don't know if, if you guys don't like it, then maybe we'll try something else. We'll, uh, okay. keep checking so, away. One last question for Mark here. Okay. If yeah. you were to see someone hold up their hands and part the Red Sea or the ocean and just kind of walk through on dry ground. Would you describe that as an empirical observation? Um, yes. Okay. So that miracles empirical are empirical. Thank you. Well, I mean, it, as long as you can do that. Okay. So if you were to observe something like that, then that would be considered right. an empirical right. observation. Right. But what I wouldn't, wouldn't think is an empirical observation is basically a story about somebody parting the Red Sea. I agree. That's not... I agree. It's, it's evidence, but it's kind of testimonial evidence. Right. So to you, that may be empirical evidence. However, to somebody else... Mm -hmm. I that didn't say is, it was empirical. Hang on, let me finish. Let okay, me finish. Okay, okay. To me, me seeing that it would be empirical evidence to me, but it wouldn't be to somebody else. It would just I be agree. my testimony. That would just be, you know, sort of just just my testimonial, which, you know, all kinds of people say all kinds of things. I don't see why we should attribute that that level of certainty to a testimony. It just isn't a good idea. Yeah, I agree. That's why uh, just a testimony, it's not, you can't live on borrowed light as the scriptures describe yeah, you can't live on borrowed light. You have to develop your own testimony and observe your own experiences. And so for me, the parting of the Red Sea, that's the borrowed light. I've got to be able to observe something like that for myself in order to have my own testimony. And so it's seeing miracles. And so when the Bible describes miracles like that, for me, it's not just, oh, well, this is something that only happens sometimes only for certain people, special people. No, that's setting an expectation that it is possible for you to experience massive miracles of that magnitude. You personally and individually, and even as a community, people can observe those things in our day. And when people can observe things in that day, that testifies that those things kind of, uh, that this kind of stuff is true. 
Yeah, the problem is people don't observe it. They only hear other that you are aware of. And as and, as yeah. the um, preponderance of things like cameras go up, like we all have video cameras on our phones, as those go up, the amount of miracles go down. So basically, an miracles invertibly um, stop happening with our ability to demonstrate them, and they can never be replicated. So they certainly are not scientific as unsubstantiated of what claims. But okay. All right. Well, with that full wrap around there, uh, once again, a uh, huge shout out to Kyle Adams and Mark Reed for coming out and have this discussion. Uh, and we'll be right back for a little uh, a little after show here. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for coming out. And uh, yeah, uh, I set the uh, link in the live chat there, Mark Reed. So uh, if you want to take oh, a moment there. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Kyle, did you want to tell anybody uh, where they can find you? You can just look up my name, Kyle Adams. That's my my youtube channel i'm also one of the globusters so you can go check them out awesome all we'll right in, uh, adam's descendant and it'll probably come up as well all right well excellent let's uh let's close her off there but thank you everybody and uh we'll be right back for a little uh a little after show music uh from the looks of things uh just for the fun of it all right thanks everyone <laughs>